या या साइड साइड यस साइड साइड टिल 2:00 बजे अरे बाप रे यू आर गेटिंग 100% दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग नो 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 सी आई डिडंट कंप्लीट माय कोर्स दैट्स व्हाट आई आई वाज अवेक टिल 2:00 Now we are attending classes. Hardly After I, that, we'll do the revision. Yesterday I had uh, MLF class also, so I was switching between them, both the twos actually. okay so hello good morning everyone so today we will be discussing about the week 11 and 12 content uh, basically the revision session for 11 and 12 so we can wait for 5 more minutes for the student and then we'll begin the session sure ma'am ma'am ma please make us do the important questions like uh, the practice assignment and graded assignment and the important part only ma'am which is important yeah. from exam point of view yes ma'am yeah yeah sure we'll do ma'am if the time permits uh, can i <coughs> one question actually uh, yesterday i had uh, uh, that week 9 actually so i'm not sure is it right time uh, if i can ask or i can ask in the end of session can i say ma'am the question ma'am Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, Hari Shankar. Yeah, you can go ahead. Ma'am, uh, in the week nine uh, uh, practice assignment, right? So we have one question. So can okay. you please help me to understand? Like, unless like uh, the session is start. So question number six, ma'am. Uh, in week nine practice okay. assignment. Okay. Okay. So we'll take after the you know uh, after week eleven, twelve. Good morning, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we'll yes. take uh, after the week eleven, twelve. We'll take your doubt. Okay, sir. Yeah. yeah. sir week 9 to 12 will uh, uh, cover at least 50% right see yeah, yeah. it will cover uh, more than like other weeks weightage basically because uh, from 1 to 8 we had quizzes right like from 1 to 4 we had quiz 1 and from yeah. Of, yeah other from 1 to 8 we had quiz 2 right so that is why like from week 9 to 12 uh, the weightage will be more more than 50% i mean you mean to say yes you can say that like 60 40 it can be yes ma'am so, ma'am uh, i really request like uh, we should discuss the important topics not all the topics okay yeah like yeah we'll do that ML only also, uh, mm -hmm. in mlf also actually uh, we are following the same rule only okay the sir is explaining okay this thing uh, won't come uh, and uh, so yeah, yeah. this thing only important topic only yeah i'll be discussing yeah. only the important topics which we'll say a lot of time right. ma'am for all of us mm -hmm. actually yeah right For eleven to eleven, I'll only be discussing the important points, so you don't need to worry about. It. Actually, week nine is very uh, confusing. Actually, so a lot of time it requires for that practice. Actually, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So I'll start sharing my screen. Yeah. So is my screen visible? Uh, would anybody like to respond? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So in week 11, basically, we started from the backup strategies, which were full backup, incremental backup, and differential backup. So full backup, basically, as the name suggests, it backs up everything. All the changes that you have made since the last backup, everything. So full backup will backup every single thing, right? Then we came across incremental backup. So what does incremental backup do? Incremental backup will basically backup all the changes that have been made since the last backup, be it incremental backup or a full backup. Then finally, we came across differential backup, which was somewhere in between the full backup and the incremental backup. So basically what differential backup did was a differential backup backs up all the changes that have been made since the last full backup, right? So these are some of the backup strategies. Now we have an example out here. I would want all of you to volunteer. So basically, uh, the question suggests that consider the given backup schedule and answer the question. So out here, you can have at most one differential backup in a week. All other backups shall be incremental, remember, except the one full backup, which we have already mentioned on Saturday. Then. On which day will you do the differential backup as to minimize the number of backup sets required for recovery on any arbitrary day? So, yeah. So, no, would anybody? Uh, yeah. yeah. Thursday, yeah. I, I will take the Thursday as a um, your differential backup <clears throat> and rest of the day for the incremental one. Yeah. Okay. Think, Anyone else? Alternate alternate days. Alternate days. Backup time. Okay, sir. We no. can only do one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. At most one differential backup yeah. in a week. So you can only take yeah. one differential backup. Oh, Saturday I'm taking full backup, ma'am. Okay. That's so right. I'll take, yeah. yeah, I'll take because Saturday Sunday is, is it won't make any difference really. Okay. Wait, okay. So I'll take on uh, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, ma'am. Any any one day. Wednesday or Thursday. I, I think Wednesday makes more sense because. If there is a failure that happens on, let's, uh, if we do it on Thursday, Correct, if failure happens before the differential backup, then you have to pick up the full on Saturday, and Sunday too, Monday three, two, two days backup, two days break, 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 break. Yeah, so. Ma'am, can you yeah. please explain no, uh, this differential and incremental no, backup properly? Actually, okay. Number three, the number of backups required. So what an incremental backup basically does is incremental backup. We'll say, for example, we have an incremental backup on Monday and an incremental backup on Tuesday, right? So say, for example, a failure occurred on Tuesday, right? A failure occurred on Tuesday after the backup has been done. Then what will happen is it will, uh, like when we perform the recovery uh, uh, using the backup strategies, what will happen? Incremental backup will backup all the changes like uh, that have been made uh, after the last full ba uh, last backup. So uh, say for example, uh, 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 I'm sorry. So say for example, a failure occurred on Tuesday, right? After the backup happened. So it uh, after the backup happened. So uh, what it will backup is it will backup all the changes that have been made since the last backup. So incremental backup was done on Monday, right? So after Monday, whatever changes were made will be backed up uh, by incremental backup on Tuesday. So you get the point, right? What is incremental backup? Yes. Yeah. Not very so, clear, ma'am. Not very clear, please. Okay. So, okay. So say for example, on Monday we are performing incremental backup. On Tuesday again we are performing incremental backup. And on Wednesday we are performing differential backup. Okay. Again on yeah. Sunday also. Backup is that uh, whatever the changes yeah. in the uh, full backup that they will uh, do the mm. uh, changes no? that is uh, incremental backup and differential. No 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 differential. Yeah. Okay. No, I have differential please. basically. Sorry. No, yeah, please continue. <laughs> okay. So uh, now say for example, and uh, a backup. Uh, sorry, a failure happened on Tuesday. Okay. A failure happened on Tuesday. Could you explain yeah. that incremental? What is incremental backup and what is differential backup? That is only she is explaining. Please. Yeah. So incremental backup is like it backs up all the changes that have been made since the last backup. So like on Tuesday, if a failure occurred after the backup happened, then what will happen is all the changes that have been made since the last backup. So last when was the last backup before Tuesday? When was the last backup? 
Saturday. No, no, no. Monday. Last Monday. backup. Monday. Yeah, Monday. that's right. So the last backup was on Monday, right? So whatever changes that have been made on Tuesday itself uh, will be backed up if a failure occurred on Tuesday. So you got the point. What is incremental backup? So ma'am, the changes happen on Tuesday will not be stored, right? If a failure occurs, yeah. the data will be lost, right? Lost. So I'll have backup yeah. up to Monday only. So you'll have backup up to Monday only. Yeah. Okay. No, incremental backup is doing like if I'm doing a failure occurred on Tuesday and there was a backup yeah. on Monday. So incremental backup I'm doing on Tuesday, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so it is going to uh, take all the changes that have that were lost because of the failure on Tuesday also. No, ma'am, I don't think so. Sorry, I didn't know the point. Ma'am, uh, she's, she's saying like uh, you have to say that whatever changes are being made between Monday and Tuesday, and suppose yeah. on Tuesday the failure occurs, mm -hmm. and so if we want to do incremental backup, whatever changes we did between Monday and Tuesday, that will be backed up by this incremental backup or not, or only the changes which were made up till Monday will be backed up by incremental. Ba by incremental backup, only the changes made after the incremental backup on Monday happened will be backed up. That is, up, say for example, at 6 p.m. every day, we do a backup, okay? So on Monday, 6 p.m., we did an incremental backup. It went well. Everything went well, okay? Then on Tuesday, we made certain changes. And uh, like after 6 p.m., say at 7 p.m., a failure occurred. Then what will happen? All the data will be lost, right? So what an incremental backup will do is it will backup all the changes that that were made after 6 p.m. from Monday till the 6 p.m. to Tuesday. So you oh, yeah, get the point, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So that was what I'm asking, ma'am. That means it's yeah. making the, I mean, it's doing a backup like yeah. after, like till 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Yeah. Whatever yeah. the changes we have made. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So understood incremental backup, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So differential, okay, so now coming to differential backup. So say, for example, again, uh, like at, say, 7 p.m., again, on Wednesday, a failure occurred. And we are performing a differential backup on Wednesday, okay? So what will happen when we use a differential backup is, when we perform the backup, what we will need is, since differential backup backs up all the changes that have been made since the last full backup, remember, since the last full backup. So what we will have to do is we will need one full backup that was performed prior to a Wednesday. So if you can see Saturday on Saturday, we will be performing a full backup every week. Right. So uh, see. OK, I'll write it here. Saturday, Sunday. So on Saturday, performing. Okay. Can you please, please mute? So, uh, so on Saturday we are performing full backup. On Sunday we are performing incremental backup, and a uh, uh, and on Wednesday we are performing differential backup. However, a failure occurred at 7 p.m. after we have done the backup, right? On Wednesday. So now what will happen when we use a differential backup is that we will need one full backup only because what differential backup? Okay. So what incremental backup did was it. It, uh, it recovered all the changes that were made on Tuesday itself, right? After uh, 6 p.m. of Monday, whatever changes were made, it uh, backed up all those changes till 6 p.m. of Tuesday. Now, what differential backup will do is it will back up all the changes that have been made since the last full backup. That is, on Sunday, whatever changes were made, on Monday, whatever changes were made, on Tuesday, and also on Wednesday, whatever changes were made after the full backup, that is after Saturday's backup, will be backed up by differential backup. Okay, so uh, if a uh, so if uh, a failure occurred at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, then only two backup sets will be required. That is the full uh, full backup that was performed on Saturday and the uh, differential backup that is performed on Wednesday. So you get the point, right? What is the no, please, please repeat, sir, ma'am. Sorry. Please repeat. I missed that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you want to understand differential backup from the beginning? 
Yes, yes. Ma'am, okay. differential backup is giving us much better backup, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So what happens in incremental backup? It will only backup those changes uh, like that were made after the backup. after any last backup right be it incremental or be it full backup or be it differential backup it won't take all the changes however full backup will take uh, like full backup will backup all the changes right so that will be very uh, like it will be very store storage consuming right it will be utilizing the storage a lot and it will take a lot of time so we can't afford to uh, like backup using the full backup every single day right that is not uh, a good a good practice so that is why we have differential backup which is the in between of incremental and full backup right so hello am i audible yes ma'am yes 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 ma'am yes ma'am backup and incremental and differential uh is it just me or uh, is the oh, voice is cracking not a bit here yeah priyadarshan yeah, what you are saying can you repeat I'm saying, ma'am, one full backup and incremental and differential. Yeah. Yeah. If you perform a differential backup, what will happen? All the changes that have been made since the last full backup will be backed up. So what I mean by that is, say, for example, on seven, a uh, failure occurred. Then, if we perform a differential backup, then what we will need to do is we will need to have only two backup sets. That is, the full backup that was performed on Saturday. and an differential backup on wednesday so what the differential backup will do is it will backup all the changes that were made after the full backup that is on sunday monday tuesday wednesday whatever changes were made will be backed up by the differential backup so uh, you got the point right what is differential backup uh, yes, am i clear yes ma'am yeah uh, priyadarshini you had this doubt right uh, so it got clear yes ma'am Somewhat clear, ma'am. We'll solve. We'll understand. Ma'am, one one question, ma'am. Yeah. In yeah. Saturday we are taking the full backup. Okay. So on Sunday the incremental backup means whatever uh, changes with respect to Saturday only those file get backed up in Sunday. But no, Monday. No, Sunday also on we Sunday, will store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On yeah. Sunday we are also making Sunday some also changes, right? So no, only. No. Two... That is why in Saturday I am taking the full backup. now okay. in sunday i am doing the incremental backup means uh, only those files get as uh, backup will be take place where with respect to saturday in sunday the change is called right okay so say for example when we perform the backup on saturday a and b were backed up okay however uh, the changes made on sunday were c and d right c and d so when we performed an incremental backup the backup we got the files that we got was c and d however uh, if we again perform a say okay so again we perform say e on monday okay if we performed e on monday then the backup that we that the backup the files that we will get is e then again on tuesday say we get f so we will get f and say on wednesday we are getting a g so what a, and we are performing a differential backup so what will happen then differential backup will backup all the changes that have been made since the last full backup right so the last full backup was on saturday after that what are the changes that we made c d e f yes. and g so c d e f and g will be backed up on wednesday so you understand understood right ma'am suppose there is a failure on thursday before the backup which we take up on at 6 pm suppose it fails at 5 pm so i take a full backup of saturday plus a differential backup of wednesday and the rest of the backup goes away right and where's rest of the data which i have changed that goes away right yeah on thursday right Yeah, yeah. If it happens yeah, that, before the yeah. backup, then I lose yeah. that data, right? Yeah, that's right. Because we haven't performed backup, right? So from right, where right. will we get that data? Yeah. So it is only up to Wednesday that I would get the data. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay. So you'd only need uh, two backups, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One. Hello, ma'am. On Saturday. Yeah. 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 Ma'am, in full backup, we do the all the changes which were made in all the days. Full backup means uh, everything which we have changed up till. Uh, Saturday, no. everything no. will be. No, all the tables of the data database will be backed up, will be stored. Yeah, 
Oh, all the everything. tables of database, okay, that will be stored. Sorry, can you repeat, ma'am? See, when everything will be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, stored. please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, uh, see, uh, I I keep on doing the full backup actually. Okay, so every uh, every week we have to do uh, the full backup. So what we do in the full backup, we have to store each and every table. Okay, full database. We have to keep this. We have to backup that full database. That is a full backup. So it will have all the tables. Okay, with the changes uh, done till that day, including. Okay, so that is a that is a full backup. And what is incremental uh, backup? Okay. Uh, like the changes when you done the full backup, right? So the changes made after that thing. Okay, so those changes will be stored uh, in the incremental uh, backup uh, uh, table actually. That's how. Uh, oh, but in full backup, whatever incremental or differential backups we have taken, that uh, will, will be uh, backed up by the full backup or not? Yes, yes, yes. Everything will be backed up till that day. When you're doing full backup, whatever data is there in the tables, okay, will be stored, will be backed up. On Sunday, if we have done any incremental backup, then that won't be taken by the full backup, right? No, that won't be taken. No. Okay. Then yes, backup, when you do the next next full backup, right? So everything will be consumed. Yeah. Means up till Saturday, whatever full backup we have done, that everything will be taken up till Saturday. Yes. 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 Hmm. It's just like you it, suggested, you can say the incremental backup is nothing but like, you know, strategy. Okay. So I'm doing every day. Okay. Suppose we're doing, we're doing every day. So we have a chances, right? Okay. Uh, we might, uh, they, there can be some failure. Okay. I may lose the data. So I just keep saving those changes somewhere here and there, here and there. I'll have backup. Suppose in case uh, backup happened, some failure happened. I'll just go back, restore the changes. Okay. Last backup done. So I'll have, I'll get the data. So the chances of, I mean, the chances of losing data actually will be very less. That's how. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, sir, I, I have a doubt actually, uh, during incremental backup, if uh, before day I have done incremental backup, uh, I required only uh, before the day data for uh, taking that backup, right? Restoring the status. I required uh, before day. If I done differential backup before day, then differential backup, but uh, plus full backup I required. If it is uh, before day, I have done incremental backup. If that particular day failure occurs, then I will take only incremental backup, right? Uh, hello, am I audible? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Can you repeat your question? I'm sorry, I lost you. Can you repeat? So, what was your yeah? Yeah, the, if you are doing incremental backup on that particular day, I have uh, got okay. failed. Uh, Monday, I have done incremental backup, Tuesday, I got failed. Okay, so I will take only incremental backup of Monday to no, no, reset no, no. the system. No, 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 no. Whatever changes were made after the incremental backup was performed on Monday, that is, whatever changes were made on Tuesday. Right, those uh, data, uh, those files or those changes will be backed up. So as I said here, right. So say E, uh, the E is the change that was done on Monday. So when we perform the incremental backup on Monday, we got E. Then on Tuesday, F was the change that was made on Tuesday, right? After that, after the backup was performed, uh, say at 6 p.m. the backup was performed, and at 7 p.m. a failure occurred, right? Then when we perform the incremental backup, F is the file or F is the change that will be backed up. Uh, is it clear to you? Ma'am, that, that means uh, like on Tuesday, as you are saying, like we, uh, we got a file as F. So after 6 p.m., we'll do a incremental backup again, not a differential backup. No, 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 no. Uh, on Tuesday, we are doing an incremental backup, right? On Wednesday only, we are doing a differential backup. So at 6 p.m., oh, yeah, we will so, be performing uh, an incremental backup. Yeah, so 6 p.m. means uh, the last change. Like on Monday, if we, if we would have got the BCD, 
like after the full backup like sun, uh, suppose saturday was a full backup and sunday we have got uh, bcd and monday we have got uh, e and uh, tuesday we have got f so if we are performing an incremental backup on tuesday like after the failure we are getting bcd e and f no, right that is not incremental backup right Okay. okay. Only the last backup till whatever yeah. we have done, that will be done. I mean, yeah, suppose Tuesday it's incremental. So on Monday, if whatever changes we have done, only that changes will be stored yeah. and then backed up. Not the Sunday ones. Yeah, not the Sunday Monday ones. So it's if the failure also is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. So F was the file that was changed since the last backup, right? So last backup was uh -huh. So Ma'am. Ma'am, yeah. I think yeah. there is a lot of discussion is going on in this one. Everyone has a different visuals. Why don't you really put up a small script and read it? No, actually the thing is not getting clear. So how do we solve the questions? No, no, that's the what I'm. We are not getting the things clear. Yeah. No, graphics is better to explain than words. Ma'am, can you Ma take one example and like you can show like A B C D like, without taking this example on your screen and you show what is incremental and what is differential? We'll get it. Without on my screen, is it? Hello. Well, yes, ma'am. I think whatever you have planned first to deliver by that time, if somebody has a question, then can ask that later. No, Otherwise, deliver means uh, no, see, we no have to solve the left. questions. We have to solve the questions, right? If we are not getting the basics, then how do we solve the question? Let the ma'am complete. Okay, just a minute. Ma'am will complete and go, but we have to solve, right? Mom, you're there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Just a minute. I'll just share my screen. I'm sorry. Okay. So let us try to understand with this example only. It's, uh, as you mentioned, in a graphical manner. So at first, uh, say uh, this is a five-day plan. Okay. So five-day backup strategies. So on the very first day, we are performing a full backup, then incremental backup, then differential backup, then again incremental, and then full backup. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> A is the A is the change that was made before, uh, like say for example, A is the change that was made on this particular day. So when we perform a full backup, A will be backed up because that is the only change or that is the only file that has been created or made changes to, right? After that, on the next day, we will be doing an incremental backup. So the changes that were made on that particular day are B, C, and D, right? So when we perform an incremental backup, what we will get is B, C, and D, as you can see out here. Okay. Then on the next day, we are performing a differential backup. Now the change that was made on the next day is F. Now what is differential backup? Differential backup backs up all the changes that have been made since the last full backup. So if you can see that this is this is where the last full backup was performed. So differential backup will back up all the changes, right? After the last full backup. So after this last full backup, what are the changes that were made? B, C, D, and F, right? So when we perform a differential backup, B, C, D, and F will be backed up. Okay. Now, next day, we are performing an incremental backup. So, the changes that were made on that particular day are D and E. So, when we perform an incremental backup, D and E will be backed up. Not B, C, D, F. Okay? Only D Got and it, E. Got it, ma'am. Yeah. Then again, on the next day, we are performing a full backup. So, what full backup will do? It will back up all the changes in the last full backup itself. Right? So, what are the changes that were made? So A, B, C, D, F, D, E, and G itself. So these are the uh, changes that were made. And uh, when we perform a full backup on the last day, 
these are the files that we get so uh, is it clear now to all full backup yes very much yes sir yes yes ma'am yes, okay okay also explain fa failure here itself madam in this drawing itself okay. yeah yeah sure okay so say for uh, so okay so uh, at this point say a failure occurred okay now uh, <clears throat> after the after performing the differential backup on the third day a failure occurred okay so now we have lost all the data right now we need to recover the data now we need to get the backup of it so what will happen when we perform differential backup so what ba differential backup does is uh, what differential backup will need is it will need only two backup sets it will need one full backup set which has all the other uh, like changes that were made and one differential backup because what differential backup will do it will backup as you can see b c d are already backed up when we perform differential backup along with f right so we will only need a full backup set uh, if a failure occurs we will only need a full backup set and one differential backup set again say for example if a failure was occurred out here after the four days incremental backup was performed right then what we will need is uh, okay anybody would like to volunteer how many backup sets would we need in order uh, to get the backup <coughs> we will need i think uh, differential <clears throat> only differential one no, ma'am you have to start with the full first that's right, right. Uh, then uh, the differential that's right and then, and then the uh, next uh, incremental that's right Yeah. yeah. Why are the because yeah. we we will need to take full right because differential backup will backup all the changes since the last full backup. So we need to take the full backup, right? But ma'am, you said incremental if failure occurs at incremental, whatever the previous uh, uh, previous I mean uh, changes were made, that will be only backed up. So in differential. Uh, is the pre previous one so i think it should be only differential no 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 it will be full back up also we are not getting na a we are yeah. not getting na yeah, we won't be get if we won't get a right and if we don't have a full backup how will we get a differential backup how will we get the backup of uh, like by using differential backup so maybe the visual here is this like so typically the a will be think of this a the drum it will be probably 100 times bigger compared to uh, you know all other incremental ones so maybe the visually we kind of get like everything is equal mm -hmm. typically full backup means it has uh, the database has let's say last two years of transactions right so whatever we have a would be imagine that thing picture 100 times bigger so when there is a data loss you have to get the big one first and then all the cumulative incremental so think of differential as cumulative incremental since the last full backup then i think it will be clear yeah yeah ma'am if totally it is incremental only you remove the differential only incremental is there in that okay so out here it is incremental right yeah then if failure occurs then yeah. what then we will need one full backup and three incremental backups because you. Oh, you got it right I'm not. Then what is the difference between differential and incremental? Both are doing the same thing. No, they are not doing the same thing, right? Yeah. How are they doing the same thing? No. You Look. said incremental backup failure occurs, and you said one full and three incremental. And suppose so the backup we... backup sets are more, right? In when we use a differential backup set, uh, when we use a differential backup strategy, the number of backup sets are less, right? We only needed full and differential, right? However. when uh, we were performing incremental on both the parts on both the days then we had to take three backup sets right instead of two so you get the point right uh, mm -hmm. like when we perform differential backup the number of backup sets is less however when we perform an incremental backup the number of backup sets is more so okay so out here in this example also if you all can recall so uh, say for example uh, out here a failure occurred okay so on first we have a, uh, after the backup on 14th was done then a full, uh, then a failure occurred okay so say for example 
out here on 8 there was no differential backup it was incremental only okay so what will be the number of backup sets that will be required in order to get back the data that was lost it will 14. be 14. 14. Backup and these many incremental backups right yes however if there was differential backup only then what does a differential backup do it will take the changes that we have made on that is second third fourth fifth six seven and eighth all eighth also so then what we would need is one full backup one differential backup, backup. and six incremental one backups incremental backup. so basically would need eight only eight backup sets only got it ma'am got it ma'am thank you ma'am yeah. yes ma'am thank you okay yeah uh someone has a doubt to one bca card yeah please go ahead uh what is the doubt that you're having Continue, please. I think the thing is left. Okay, yeah, I knew that. Okay, no issues. So now, what I want is now I want now that you all have understood. Now I want you all to give this answer. Yeah. So on which day, in order to minimize the number of backup sets, remember we have to minimize the number of backup sets that is required for recovery on any arbitrary day. So we need to select that particular day that will require the least amount of uh, backup sets, be it uh, like on any single day a, a, a failure has occurred. So which day would it be? OK, so some of you have answered Wednesday and Thursday. OK, so which one would be the best one? I think Wednesday because it's Sorry. Ma'am, it's Wednesday, maybe. Wednesday, yeah, that's right. It will be Wednesday. Why? Okay. So, say for example, we are taking on Thursday, and uh, say on say on Thursday after the differential backup, a failure occurs. Okay. So, what will be the number of uh, backup sets that will be required? One full backup, and say on the other days we are performing incremental. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Right. However, say on Wednesday, a failure occurred. Okay. Uh, so, how many will we need? One, one. on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. And one, two, three, four. Right? Ma'am, can you repeat, ma'am, these, uh, it's given, like, right, like, which day we are performing the differential and incremental, will, will it be given or no, it's we have to good. consider? So, yeah, so we have specified that you can use at most one differential backup in a week, okay? And all other backups shall be incremental, except the one full backup. So, uh, by the question only, you can understand that out here, you can see that on Saturday, a full backup will be performed every single week. However, other days will have incremental backup only. Only one day can have a differential backup in a week. Okay. So now you need to figure out on which day do you need to do the differential backup so as to minimize the number of backup sets required for recovery on any arbitrary. Okay. So now say for example, a failure occurred on Friday. And on Friday, uh, an incremental backup was performed. Okay. So what will be the total number of... Uh, Backup sets that will be required. Anyone? Seven. 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 We are performing a differential backup. Oh, okay, okay. So, so on, on which day, ma'am? Because there are two. Yes, on the which one are we going with? Day on Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. We should erase the differential on Thursday just to avoid the confusion. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And why is it only on Tuesday, sir? Three, ma'am. Ma yeah, it will be four. Hello. Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, my question is why then not we chose Tuesday? 
because if we choose okay. tuesday on differential then uh, it will be 1 full plus 2 sorry 3 uh, okay but you have to consider all the possibilities say for example you have taken a differential back up on tuesday okay and a failure occurred on thursday then how then what will be the number of like backup sets on thurs uh, on failure occurred on thursday right uh, full oh, plus okay. differential plus uh, uh, two incremental yeah so four four okay just a minute so consider mm -hmm. this is a everyday we are performing Okay. Now uh, we are performing a differential backup on Tuesday, and a failure occurred after the backup was done on Wednesday. Right? So what will be the number of backup sets that will be required? One full backup that was done on a previous Saturday. Then uh, one Saturday plus Saturday. Yeah. Then, one full plus differential. No wait. Okay. Yeah. On Tuesday, one differential. Differential. Yeah. yeah and Wednesday, one incremental. Lot of background noise. Yeah, so total it will be three. I am not able to hear that. Can you repeat? Okay. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So, say for example, a failure occurred on Wednesday. On okay. Uh, okay, just creating a little bit of confusion. So, see, we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday when a full backup was performed, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay, so out here you want a differential backup, and then on Wednesday, okay, then on Wednesday. A failure rocker. Let me see for example. And we have two Wednesdays. Uh, one on the left also. Your yeah. Two days one. Okay. Now tell me, uh, what will be the uh, backup set if uh, on Friday? uh like a failure occurred after the backup ma'am one full one differential and three failure uh, the incremental backups three incremental so total will be five right yes ma'am however if we would have performed a differential backup on wednesday then what would it have been one four yes. it four. would have been four right yeah, yeah. okay so So you're getting the no, point. No, witness right? date is three. Why four? One okay. full, one differential, and one. One Saturday, different. okay. One Wednesday, differential backup. One on Thursday and one on Friday, right? So it will be no, four. No, if it is Friday, it is five. No. Uh, so mean the failure mean? occurred after the backup. After the backup, no, Friday. differential backup in which day? Tuesday or witness day? Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, then one, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you got the point, right? Yes. 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 So, so ma'am, I guess uh, we can take uh, the knowledge we learnt in statistics. We don't know on which day the failure is going to occur. Hmm. We can assume uh, that there are seven days in a week. Hmm. The probability of failure happening any given day in a week is one by seven. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if we So essentially, there are seven scenarios, and yeah. we have to calculate for each day. Assuming we, since we don't know on which day the failure is going to occur, right. for each day we can compute if the failure happens on that particular day. It's like a conditional probability. Yeah, that's right. Right. So, what is hmm. the number of backups we would need? So, full backup is always given. So, that's not going to change. That's so. Right. Then the only thing that is going to make a difference is when is the differential backup, and and then then you have to take. The number of incrementals between the differential backup and the failure date. 
So if yes. you keep doing that, we'll basically have seven rows in the table, hmm. and we calculate the expected number of like average basically, right? Right. So only parameter here is basically I am going to change only my the day on which the differential uh, backup back is taken. Yeah. Right. So essence. Yeah. So it is a little complicated. So I think intuitively what you will see is if the differential backups should be in the middle, somewhat around middle. So yeah, that way you will kind of you know, balance it. So it's like a maximum likelihood right. estimate. Right. right. So that's so right. given that it should be either a Wednesday or a Thursday. Remember we had that debate, right? So you basically check two scenarios. Whichever scenario gives you the least expected value, which is actually yeah. our goal, would be yeah. our answer. Yeah. That's right. Ma'am, if it is yeah. if, if it is a known situation of failure, I will just put the differential backup just before the day of failure. Okay. In the, the way where the problem is given, if you are asking me when it is good for me to take the differential backup, mm -hmm. okay, then I will just put it on Thursday because there is no condition that it's a probabilistic approach is not there. So if the question is asked like that, then uh, is it okay for me to choose a Thursday as the differential backup day? Okay, so if you choose it on Thursday and okay. I have only three. Okay, so on Thursday you want a differential backup. Yeah. Okay, and say for example, uh, okay, on Thursday. Yeah, you can also do on Thursday, but Friday, uh, uh, Wednesday okay. would be okay. Like we can check for the possibilities, as Deva Smith mentioned. You can check for the possibilities. So, so ma'am, I'd like to just add, I think there was a question from Subramanian. So you're assuming what you're saying is you're almost uh, the, the example I was giving the probability of failure happening on any given day is one by seven. So you just happen to pick up whatever Thursday or Friday. Yeah. That event is actually one by seven. Now, by making a statement, you're making it probability one. If yeah. see, now, if hold you on know, a minute. Why do we read? Why, why do we complicate it? Why are we telling me it is going to fail every week and one by seven and all those things? It's not given. The problem is silent. It's a static situation. Okay, the failure is happening on Friday, and this how is the schedule that? of how do, you, how do you know? No, the problem is problem, problem is putting the bounds. Problem statement is telling a static situation. Okay, for a given situation, this is what my approach. Am I wrong in that basis? Here, the failure is not given, right? In this question. No, 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 no. What ma'am has already marked up that one. No, I am talking about that one. I am not going to the top. I'm, I'm, I'm just taking reference to the example what ma'am ma said. Saturday is a full backup. Friday is a failure day. And what is a good day, good day to put up a differential backup? This is all the problem uh, statement. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just one of the scenarios. So, yeah. so my approach is just the day before the failure day, I will put it on differential backup. Yeah, yeah. Friday is just one of the scenarios. So now, yeah. now let's get back to the given problem. Where is the complications are coming? They had given a failure day and full backup day, and uh, they are asking when is good to put up a differential backup. No, that's not the problem. Is <clears throat> that's right? So why do we really mess around on that one? So just before the Saturday, you put the differential. Now where is the failure? No, the objective is to minimize the number of. Uh... Uh, you, uh, backups, backup no? number. Backups. That's so all right, no? it is coming that if you put the Wednesday as a differential backup, then mm. all permutation combination that is the most suitable day. This is the only thing. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. yeah. So when you are considering about the backup, it is not only the differential backup. You have to take all the con all the scenario, putting the failure in each day. What is the yeah. number of backup is coming? Put it that in set and get the which is the minimum. That is coming the Wednesday. That, that's no, what is the whole confusion comes up all because the failure day is not mentioned, no? Yeah, that's the that is exactly the you know the complication. So, so then Dapshit Mahanti's approach of given a situation, a probable approach, then it is whatever he is telling that it is in the midway between the full backup to the uh, to the failure day, what already the probable day, then we will put a differential backup. No, that's all. Is it is it mathematically wrong or anything? I think, um, yeah. Otherwise, we spend um, one. Ma'am, I, I have a question. 
Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Ma'am, uh, why, ma'am, can you explain why Friday having a differential on Friday is not a good choice? Uh, directly. Also on Tuesday, ma'am. Okay. So say Friday on Friday a differential backup is happening. Okay. So, uh, say for example on on say Thursday. Friday on morning, say, if uh, there's a failure and we are doing the backup on Friday afternoon or evening, then we would have to do around six, one full backup for Saturday and six days of backup, and that is seven backups. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Uh, yeah. Can can that's can you right. please let uh, ma'am okay. answer the question? Please. Yeah, yeah. Ma'am, could you please answer this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just done. So, so uh, say for example, on Friday we are doing a, a differential backup. On Saturday, one full backup. So on, say for example, on uh, next Thursday, right, a failure occurred, and every other day we so out again. Here on Friday only we are doing the differential backup, and say on Thursday we are getting a failure. And on the other days, we are performing incremental backup. So what will be the number of backup sets? It will be one full backup and five uh, incremental backup. So it will be a total of, oh, sorry, five, six backup sets, right? Uh, yes, Up till Thursday. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So six is a large number. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that is right. Yeah. If you are getting is... four, yeah. Sorry, uh, if you are doing it on Tuesday, then also it's a large backup uh, number of backups. If we are oh, putting uh, differential on Tuesday, okay, then also we are getting large number of backups. Okay, let's check if we are doing differential. So you need to check for every possibility, as mentioned out here, for recovery on any <laughs> arbitrary date, right? So now, uh, if you are having a differential backup on Tuesday, right? And mm -hmm. say on Friday, you are getting a failure. So the total number will be one full backup, one differential backup, and three incremental backups. So again, we are getting five. Full is of Saturday, differential is of Tuesday, and three incremental of Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. Friday. Yeah. So then we consider the Friday also, right? The, for the increment to compile? Incremental? Yeah, yeah, because uh, like the failure we are considering as uh, like the failure has occurred after the backup was done. Okay, after the backup. Okay. Yeah, if it would have been done before the backup, let's not just confuse it, right? Let's just consider that the backup is done, like the failure occurred after the backup, right? So on Wednesday, how many are we are getting uh, actual set of backup? Okay, so. Uh, so on Wednesday, so if a failure occurs on Friday, then mm -hmm. the total will be one full backup, one in differential backup, and two incremental backups. Okay. So total of four we will get. Total so four. now let's check for any other day. Say for example, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. So. Uh, mm, Let's consider that, okay, so on, uh, say on Thursday, on Thursday, a failure occurs. So how many backup sets will be required? One full one backup, full, one, one differential, differential and one increment. Hmm. Right? Yeah. So uh, you all got the point, right? Or is, yes, is yes, anyone of you still having doubts? Yes. Yes, yes okay. So Wednesday okay. is... So any uh, sufficient day. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So okay, that's that about the backup strategies. Then we discuss about the database modification schemes, uh, which were divided into two types: immediate modification scheme and deferred modification scheme. So immediate modification scheme, what it means is that all the uh, changes will be made even before the transaction has performed the commit operation. And deferred basically meant that the changes will be stored to the buffer or the disk after the commit operation has performed, right? If you all can recall. So out here, we have one example. So consider a log of a transaction as shown below where 
rupees 300 is transferred from account a to b initially account a has uh, rupees 1200 and b has rupees 1000 so now you need to choose uh, like after step three what will be the correct uh, like position of a and b what will be the correct value or amount in a and b so according to deferred what will be the correct amount and according to immediate what will be the uh, correct amount so yeah any one of you what is deferred and immediate that can you describe uh, please describe no, no. once more you can okay so immediate what happens is say for example if uh, we have performed like if we have performed say a transaction t1 say start okay then uh, we have done t1 a we have changed the value of a to from 100 to say 500 okay so now uh, when we say immediate database modification as the name suggests what it means is that when we have performed the operation right it will directly store the change in the buffer or the disk so basically the value of a out here will change from uh, 100 to 500 directly when the operation is done right however uh, in deferred database modification it will out here it will still be 100 when we perform a commit then for de deferred database modification then the value of a will change from 100 to 500. Oh, unless commit it's done, the default will not change the value. Mm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And immediate will automatically change to the new value if. Yeah, once the operation is performed. The operation is performed. Yeah. Operation is performed yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, madam. The, these changes are in the buffer only or in, in the main database only? Buffer. Oh. Okay. It will be in the buffer. Yeah. Okay. 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 <clears throat> So ma'am, it, it won't be committed, right? It doesn't mean like uh, uh, keeping the immediately, right? It doesn't mean commit, right? Yeah, it doesn't mean commit. When we perform commit, it will be stored in the stable storage. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Anybody would like to volunteer? What would be the correct answer? I think option, option C is correct. C is correct. Okay. So in yes. case of immediate database modification, the amount in account A is 900 and 1300. So, yeah. uh, okay. So T0 is changing the value of A from 1200 to 900. So what happens in immediate database modification? It will directly change the amount, right? Mm -hmm. So the value of A according to immediate will be 900 and the value of B according to immediate will be 1300. 30 so that's right. C is the correct option. And what yeah. will, uh, will any other option be correct? And B. B will be correct. B Why? Option. Because we haven't performed any commit. So the value of A, A according to deferred will be 1200 only and the value of B will be 1000 only. No changes will be made. Right? Because no commit has been performed. Ma'am, in so, case of deferred, if uh, we had done commit, then uh, it will be then same. The as value, then the value would have been. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that about the details. Ma'am, please okay, come on. So, sorry. Ma'am, after step three, we have commit. Then mm -hmm. what will be the value in deferred and immediate? The value immediate, of immediate will, will, yeah, it will be the same. Both of them what will about be deferred? the same. Deferred okay. means commit is performed. So the value of A and B will also be changed by the deferred uh, database modifications. Right? Okay. okay so we have another example so out here according to the deferred database modification so say for example after the step seven a crash has occurred and say a recovery has been completed successfully completed then which of the following action will be true so remember the commit and not commit condition and then answer so what will be the uh, what will be the situation of t naught and t1 that is what the question. T zero redo, redo and T one is undo. Undo. Sorry, T zero T zero redo. T zero T one undo. No action. And T one will be no action. Undo. Why no action? Sir, T zero should be no. So that won't be no action, right? Since we haven't uh, committed and a uh, like 
and uh, like uh, sorry undo will be happen after the failure yeah Ma'am, can you please explain this? Since Steven has not been committed, so we would have to uh, undo it. I mean, the failure has happened before it, before it has been committed. I guess. Yeah, and T one has been committed. No, no, no. T zero has T1, been committed. T zero has been committed. So but nothing to do. We'll yeah. have to do that again. So, yeah. No, actually, we have to do is T zero to redo. And T one first redo then undo. No, actually, if you can then see the, the cycle question, is complete. okay. If you can see in the question, we are following the defer database modification scheme, right? So what happened when we perform the defer database? It is it will be uh, like it will be uh, sorry. Okay. So basically, T one not T one commit is not present in the log, right? Yes. Mm. So what, we don't what, what, need T one commit. Hmm. Is not present in the log, right? Yeah, when T one is not committed yet. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have to undo it. So T zero we have to redo and uh, T one we have to undo. Undo. Uh... No, I mean second of <laughs> no action. Okay, why no action? Because in uh, this particular uh, differential database, there is no commit, so no action required for T one. That's right, because no changes will be made, right? To the yeah. buffer or to the database, no changes will be made. If a commit has not been performed in the defer database modification, now T not start and T not committed, right? So, uh, so the value was stored, right, in the database. So that is why after that, since a crash occurred, so we need to redo the changes. However, when T one started, it never committed, right? Even uh, like uh, before the failure, it never committed. So none of the changes were, uh, none of the changes were like stored, right? So, ma'am, you mean to say for T1, it, since it hasn't come in, no changes have been made in that. So, we That's won't right. take any action after the yeah. crash occurs. Yeah, we don't. T0 is since it has been committed, we will have to roll back to initial state. No, not roll back, but redo it. Roll redo, back would be no. undoing. Yeah. Redo. We, uh, what does redo? Does, what redo does, ma'am? Can you explain, ma'am? Yeah, please. Redo will rewrite the new values. So, say for example, a T naught. So, when we perform a, like after the failure, when we perform a redo operation, what the value of A will be, we are redoing it, right? Uh, if you can remember when we use a, a control Z, control Y, what, what redo does? It will rewrite, right? Whatever we wrote. Mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah. new values, right? Mm -hmm. So, then uh, the value of A, when we redo it, will be 900. 900. And the value of B, when we redo it, will be 800. In case of redo, okay. Yeah, in case of and, redo. However, if we would have done an undo, undo the value yeah. of A would have been 1200, and the value of B would have been 1000. Because no change. Hmm. we are changing the value to the old values, right? We are rolling it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so option B the, is correct. Ma'am, so in this case, what would be the value of D and D? D and D, the, the there would be no value because no value. we are we are following deferred database modification scheme, right? Okay. So until and unless a commit has been performed, the values won't be stored. Okay. So right? that is why out here T one needs no action. Okay. So uh, instead of deferred, it, if it was immediate, yeah. What would have been the answer? Yeah. Please, you answer. Mm -hmm. What should have been done? If it was immediate, then what and, would have been done? And the crash has occurred after step seven. That's right. Then uh, uh, T0, T0, T0 and T1 redo? Yes. Both redo. No, I think uh, T0. T0 no, nothing. redo. T1, yeah, redo. T1 undo. undo. That's right. T1 yeah. will be undone. That's right. Undo. Because, because we haven't performed a commit, right? 
but okay. the values will be stored and now since the crash occurred the data the entire log will get into an inconsistent state right it will all be a mess so what we need to do since we haven't performed commit so we need to undo all the changes that we made so basically when we undo the value of d will be 200 and the value of e will be 100 and because t not it was already committed the values were in the buffer so when a crash occurred uh, like it won't get into that much inconsistent state so the value of a and b when we redo it will be 980 yeah so you got the point i'm right? just uh, yeah. one confusion okay. the definition of this redo and undo mm -hmm. now with respect to this database uh, default database and with respect mm -hmm. to the checkpoints is mm -hmm. it something different no it's not okay so what then, are you uh, pointing at yeah uh, pointing out uh, because why I am saying this because in T1, mm -hmm. if you think this is with respect to the checkpoints, then mm -hmm. T1 first redo, then undo. Because whenever we try, uh, means why I am performing this redo and do to get the data from the inconsistent test to a consistent one, right? That's right, yeah. So T0 is committed, redo means data gets crashed. I have already performed the commit operation, so I want to have the change value. So a redo is perfect. So mm -hmm. I'm doing the redo to get the back the T0. Yeah. But if you see the T1, T1 is not mm -hmm. committed at the time mm -hmm. of crash. That okay. means I have started the work on T1, mm -hmm. but I am still not finished. That's but right. if you do the un, uh, if if you can't redo that, that means whatever I have done first i have to put it and then do the undo operation to get the start point of t1 from where i can start building so if you go to the checkpoints the redo and undo definition it's stated in this fashion so here it's something uh, different i i observe in the uh, deferred database so yeah deferred database is somewhat different so that deferred means data. we have I have to consider this redo undo definition with respect to checkpoints and deferred database differently, right? But it is not that difficult. Ultimately, both of them will uh, like point to the same direction only. Yeah, the only difference, ma'am, is in case of uh, immediate update, uh, we assume almost that there is a commit after every statement. If we assume hmm. that, then then the strategy will be clear. So then. Uh, T, T0 in this case, there is no confusion. Commit has been given means you have to redo in under both assumptions, whether it is immediate or deferred. But uh, the difference comes with respect to the T1. If it is under deferred, because it was not committed, we have to undo it. But under uh, immediate uh, modification scheme, we have to. So, ma'am, uh, <laughs> we try to print the value of D and E. Hmm. Okay, in this case, so hmm. what will be the value? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Like it, it won't commit. It won't commit the data. It won't make the changes like 200, 250. It won't make. Okay, okay. So for yeah. DE, I'm talking about DE, hmm. DE. So if I try to get the value after whatever the crash happened, hmm. won't I get the value of D is at 200 and E? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Right. It will be the old value only. Whatever value was previously of D and E, it will be that one. It won't change. Okay. okay. Ma'am, in case of incremental. Sorry? In case of incremental database modification. Incremental or immediate? Immediate. Oh, sorry, immediate. immediate. Yeah, sorry. Immediate, yeah. yeah. In case of immediate, the value of D and E would have changed. The value of D would have been 50 and the value of E would have been 30. Because what happens? Like once the operation is done, like uh, uh, once the operation is done, the value will get changed in the buffer. Right? Oh, so yeah. value of, if it would have been emitted, yeah. Ma'am, once you say it's in a buffer, right? If a crash happened, the buffer will be gone out, right? Hmm. So why it's like is it there could, it could, even to it be is, It is like somewhat dependent. If you could recall the definition also, it was buffer slash disk. So sometimes it could be buffer also, sometimes it could be disk also. Ma'am, uh, yeah. a, a clarity. Yep. We got to do redo only when a commitment is done. 
no matter whether it's that's right it. that's that's right that's absolutely okay right. and we got to undo hmm. when nothing was committed correct that's right yeah that's can right. we put a small matrix on that one what and is can then you put a tick yeah. mark what they mean and the row s uh, row s redo undo and hmm. the column s uh, immediate and uh, deferred hmm. then can we populate the applicable boxes hmm. or we yeah can can we do that one ma'am yes ma'am please so that will be helpful okay what do you want me to do In just put the matrix on the left side okay no there's a space is there wherever the space is there what okay put the rows as redo undo okay so ma'am he wants a cross tab between you know uh, if there's yeah, a yeah, yeah, statement or not tab. and there are two different scenarios whether a deferred database modification or a immediate modification scheme so it's mm -hmm. just to put a box two a matrix just two a matrix yeah two by two matrix okay so what do you want me to do now two yeah, by two matrix create a table okay so you want yeah. me to create a table yeah, yeah a small table okay so the row two rows, rows two columns two two rows and two columns here yeah. okay okay one is uh, immediate other one is deferred now uh, row or column either one you can take it anything okay immediate and, and one is deferred deferred yeah and uh, now let's take the rows we do one to put a middle in between one row one line split the line in between yeah yeah put uh, we do one to and now can we really tick the boxes applicable for whatever it is like okay. in immediate field okay so uh, from this particular example only is it yes yes no yeah we can take yeah yeah i mean this only okay so uh, the uh, so in, so we are since we are following the deferred database so let us at first check for deferred mm -hmm. so like uh, for redo redo t not it started and it committed so in deferred t not will be redone right and right. for undo since uh, why do we need undo when we have made certain changes and mm. the data and because of a failure the database went to some inconsistent state yes. however what happens in de deferred is until and unless you are performing the commit operation no changes will be made right so that means for t1 no action is required So, ma'am, no action means what are the values? Sorry. No action means what are what would be the, the values? The value, the old values, the value of D uh, and E. We will we will we will we'll come to the values next. Now we will just populate it and we will go back to the values. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that's that for the deferred database modification. Now when we come to immediate database modification, so T not has started and committed. So T not needs to be redone. however even started but it did not commit but because immediate database modification like uh, make the changes so store the changes so team 1 needs to be under right yeah let's start the values now sorry ma'am i just missed it because of one emergency phone call just can you just brief me okay so i have just discussed with you that uh, whether there is any difference between this deferred database for redo and do definition with respect to the checkpoint from there i left uh, i think we can defer that one only it will jump over to checkpoint and we'll do that one because no i am just asking point. whether is there any yeah, difference yeah. or yeah okay. we'll go to checkpoint next only so like uh -huh. we can figure out the changes okay okay so now let's check the values so the value of a and b right right So, for immediate, the value of A and B will be because it has committed and because we are doing the redo. So the value of A will be nine hundred and the value of B will be eight hundred. Then the value of D will be two hundred and the value of E will be hundred. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. That is for deferred, right? I'm sorry. Okay, 
so the value of deferred would be a would be a would be 900 b would be 800 d would be 200 and e would be 100 now if we would have done immediate then the value of a would have been 900 again and b would have been 800 the value of d would have been 50 and yes. the value of e would have been 30. So you got the point, right? Mm -hmm. so now it's clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So then we'd move to, okay, yeah. Then we'd move to uh, checkpoints, okay? So what happens when we use a checkpoint? So out here, if you can see, Consider the following log involving three transactions, T1, T2, and T3. So this is the trans uh, this is the log. So you have to figure out which of the following will happen after the crash. So out here, at the end, a crash occurred. Okay. So like, what would be the uh, situation? So for uh, like, let's just try to create it in this manner. So say out here, a checkpoint has occurred and then out here, a failure occurred, okay? Or a crash happened. So T1 has started and T1 has started and committed before the checkpoint occurred. So let us write it down in this manner. Now T2 started after the checkpoint and it committed. So T2 started and it committed before the uh, crash could happen. T3 started after the checkpoint and it never committed. So T3 never committed. So now what happens in checkpoints is like before the remember if there are say for example if there are two checkpoints okay two or more than two checkpoints right say C1 and C2 okay. So what you need to consider or what you need to focus more on is the last checkpoint. You have to only check for the last checkpoint. The checkpoints uh, prior to them are not so much important. You have only to check for the last checkpoint. Whatever changes or whatever uh, like uh, conditions you are going to give to different transactions will be dependent on the last checkpoint only. Please remember that. So now, okay, I just remove this. Okay. So now, uh, according to checkpoint, if a transaction has started and committed before the checkpoint occurred, then we can simply ignore that particular transaction, right? So T1 started and committed before the checkpoint occurred, right? So we can simply ignore T1. So out here, as it shows, T1 is committed before the checkpoint, so it will be ignored. So that is a correct option. Then in uh, then another uh, another condition is that if a transaction has started Say, for example, before the checkpoint or after the checkpoint and it has committed before the failure, then we need to redo that particular transaction. So T2, if you can see, has started after the checkpoint, but it has also committed before the failure, right? Before the failure could occur, T2 committed. So what we need to do is T2 needs to be redone. T2 is committed, but after the checkpoint, so redo all its updates. So this is the correct option. Another condition is that if a transaction starts after the checkpoint or before the checkpoint and is still executing when the failure occurred, then we need to undo that particular transaction. So out here, if you can see T3 started after the checkpoint, but it was still getting executed when the failure occurred. So we need to undo T3. So basically, it will be T1 equals to short these conditions in very short ma'am sorry uh, the conditions which you, can you please write down in short ma'am like uh, in brief in short so yes okay so uh, one of the condition is that if a transaction has started and committed 
बिफोर द चेक पॉइंट देन इग्नोर देन वी कैन सिंपली इग्नोर इट ओके बिकॉज प्रायर टू द चेक पॉइंट वॉट एवर चेंजेस हैव बीन मेड लाइक इफ इट हैज स्टार्टेड एंड कमिटेड बोथ बिफोर द चेक पॉइंट देन ऑल द चेंजेस ऑल द चेंजेस विल बी सेव टू द स्टेबल स्टोरेज एंड विल गेट द आउटपुट सो वी कैन लाइक वी कैन जस्ट इग्नोर दैट पर्टिक्युलर ट्रांजेक्शन ओके नाउ इफ अ ट्रांजेक्शन हैज स्टार्टेड बिफोर और आफ्टर चेक पॉइंट बट हैज ऑल्सो कमिटेड बिफोर द क्रैश ऑकर then we can redo then we need to redo the transaction right so out here if you can say for example in this case uh, t2 started after checkpoint right in case say for example if t2 would have started before the checkpoint no one please uh, <coughs> if t2 started uh, before the checkpoint but it committed before the failure could occur right then we need to redo it say for example t2 right and say out here again we have t4 t4 so what's happening is t2 has started before the checkpoint t4 has started after the checkpoint but the main criteria is that both of them has committed before the failure occurred right so in that case what we need to do is t2 and t4 needs to be redone okay then the last point would be if a transaction has started before or after the checkpoint and has not committed uh ma'am Uh, shall you uh, describe about the t4 also sorry yeah that is what i described right uh, like if uh, if you can remember that if a transaction has started before or after checkpoint so t2 basically started before the checkpoint t2 started after the checkpoint yes, but has also committed before the crash so if you can see t4 has committed before the crash occurred right yes ma'am so in that case we need to redo that particular transaction okay so again getting back so t has started before a, a transaction has started before or after a checkpoint and has not committed when the crash occurred then you need to undo it makes sense okay so out here say t3 it started after the checkpoint but it was still not it has still not committed right when the crash occurred so in that case t3 needs to be undone say for example if we had t5 which started before the uh, checkpoint but it was still uh, not committed when the crash occurred then t5 also needs to be undone so so uh, just 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 one just just one uh, explanation uh, we don't have to consider this immediate transfer and deferred transfer for this algorithm no 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 you don't need to that will be mentioned in the question specifically you don't need to worry about it out here also in this question if you can see we are not mentioning immediate or deferred in any other way in this question we have specified that where the database modification scheme is used okay. so you don't need to worry about that we will be specifying it very loud and clear but but uh, ma'am <clears throat> here's uh, once again the same thing mm -hmm. uh, with respect to the video lecture mm -hmm. in the in this week what i observe in checkpoints in case of this t3 and t5 it will be first redo and then undo to get the start point when you actually coming back to the database uh, after crash okay. because if you so only 
okay you don't need to complex things so much okay so what you are saying is you have to redo and then you have to undo so Correct. like ultimately you are going to change the uh, the value to the old value only right even if you are redoing it so you can directly consider it as redo undoing only no right? only the difference that why i am confused because recovery means uh, when i coming back from the crash i will start mm -hmm. working right but if yeah. i do not know where i am from where i need to start then mm -hmm. i will be in loss although i am not yeah, that's right so that is why yeah. I, I saw in the video lecture sir said ki in this scenario t3 and t5 has to be first redo and then undo okay ma'am so, main confusion is going on with the undo and redo ma'am so after commitment yeah. after we committed actually so we do we need to perform undo or redo ma'am if we have committed and then the failure occurred then we need to do redo that is all you can remember that we redo, redo in the sense ma'am we have to restart everything no you don't need to restart you need to rewrite the uh, the new values whatever were the new values so out here since we are redoing t2 right so the value of b will be 15 like here it is 15 only like okay uh, so uh, here yeah t not we were redoing right yeah yes, t not yeah t not we were redoing so the value of a would be 900 and the value of b would be 800 that is writing the new values only that is redoing okay so okay i okay let me put in this for say okay ma'am okay mm -hmm. see ma'am scroll up ma'am the same same question go okay. up ma'am yeah ma'am here yeah. so see a, a earlier it was a 1200 okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we made the we made the update like we make it 900 okay fine mm -hmm. then b1000 mm -hmm. then we made mm -hmm. it as a 800 okay that's right we mm -hmm. committed also mm -hmm. okay but crash happened mm -hmm. right so you are saying it will not uh, hold the new values in the system yeah it will like when a crash occurred right the data uh, the data got lost or inconsistent some way some way or the other but since we performed the commit operation the values were all uh, the values were like uh, present in the <clears throat> uh, like stable storage so we just need to redo it we will get the uh, like okay. new values only so ma'am you are saying just to mm -hmm. that the that particular temporary storage is there right okay mm. so just to make it effect over there we'll again try to update the same value only okay yeah we'll try yeah. to update a with again 900 and yeah. b with 800 800 mm. right that's even right. though system already has the mm. value in in the mm -hmm. table level that's but, right but to bring it into buffer we have to yeah. redo yeah okay so we are mm. telling the uh, system okay keep this value only old values mm. only okay that's right yeah well, actually ma'am this doesn't make sense because after committing right so mm. uh redoing thing doesn't make any uh, i mean any any improvement actually anyway yeah i'll take it so what do you expect it has to be undo is it after after and, commit, and yeah uh, he asked same question okay so regarding undo ma'am okay so yeah. after committing if i do undo will it make any difference yeah after come after committing you don't need to make undo right because when do you need to okay so you need to know the criteria when to redo and when to undo exactly so you can redo only when there is a start okay there is a start operation but there is no commit operation you need oh, sorry for redoing there needs to be a start operation and there needs to be a commit operation only then you can redo that particular transaction however for undoing there should be a start but there might be a an abort or a commit operation or or no commit okay. operation basically mm -hmm. for undo phase for undo operation ma'am I, i think it doesn't flow in natural logic what 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 but so far i imagine this when we make a commitment the buffer is updated with a new value hmm. so if you get back to the original value we have to undo the buffer correct it has committed it is committed so the buffer is updated with the new value okay so see when Now, we you want to go back that... to original value then i have to undo that one am i really right in my no 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 you, we... you don't need to go to the original value because it has committed so you have to write the new values that's why you have to do the re redo hmm. oh, ma'am same thing he is saying uh, for the redo right 
we have to update again same thing a with the 900 b with the 800 actually that's right that's what uh, she's saying so that's where the difference yeah. come out so we have to manually update actually okay whatever hmm. value we are expecting uh, for the a and b okay we have to update manually we are doing we have to redo uh, those update uh, manually actually so yeah. a will be 900 and b will be 800 in the in case of committed so because the commit was performed the changes are still there but just to keep it uh, keep the entire database in a consistent state we are just doing it we are just keeping it to the uh, like redo phase so ma'am for simplicity now for those cases i will consider only undo right as a final step for which cases? That T3 and T5 in your drawing. Yeah, T3 and T5. For Only for undo. I will consider the final step as undo. That's right. What is the answer for previous question, ma'am? Just, uh, just, just like curious. Can you just tick the answer in the previous yeah, question? Yeah, it's the second. Okay. It's second one. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got what? Why? Is Can it be general? Sorry. Um, can it be generalized that in deferred it is only redoing is there because there will be no undo because we are never come uh, uh, there will be only redoing right in deferred hmm. Hmm. there will be undoing in deferred that's right and yeah, immediate and immediate there will be only undo uh, uh, undo, redo. Both, undo redo both okay. yeah. Okay, so uh, is it clear? Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. okay. So finally, mm -hmm. in uh, week 11, we discussed about RAID. So basically, I won't be going in depth for RAID. I'll just uh, like give you an overview. We have discussed RAID in one session very clearly. So I'd, if you are still having some doubts, I'd request all of you to go through that. Which session, ma'am? Uh, it was a uh, week 11's open session. Okay. Go through it. We have discussed okay, rate. the ent entirely that Ma'am, can but you take a question on rate? Like one question was there in the previous center. Yeah, this kind of question. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take this. Question. Just briefly describe and then briefly the describe. Uh, I won't be going into much depth. If you want to learn, uh, like if you want to get more uh, knowledge about it, then you can just go through that session. That would be oh, very yeah, just exam point of view. Okay, yeah, I, I'll take this example. Maybe it will help you out. Uh, is it okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just first briefly describe and then go to the example. Okay, so, uh, so RAID is basically nothing but a redundant array of independent disks. Okay, so what it is, is it is a disk organization technique that manages a large number of disks by providing a view of a single disk with high reliability, high speed and capacity. So that is the definition of RAID. Now RAID basically has a number of levels, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 2, RAID 3, 4, 5 and 6. So basically RAID 2 and 3 are basically for <clears throat> uh, like just a theory purpose. You don't need to go through it. You, you can just have the knowledge of RAID 2 and 3. Other than that, uh, like so RAID 0 at first basically started starting from RAID 0. So it used the data stripping and uh, also no redundant data is available in RAID 0. Now data stripping basically means that dividing the data in say suppose there are uh, like suppose okay sorry suppose there are say uh, like five uh, uh, like say A, B, C, D okay A, B, C, D. So when we do data stripping, what we mean is we will keep it in different disks. So that is data stripping. However, out here, no redundant data will be present. So uh, since no redundant data is present, therefore, no redundant information needs to be updated. So that is one of the pros of RAID 0. But and it has... Sorry, yeah. uh, we are putting the data in the different disks. Yeah, that's well, right. Data stripping. Hmm. Okay. So say if we have A, B, C, D, right, as the data. So we are keeping A, B, C, D. So now what, what is one of the cons of RAID 0 is that if in case one disk fails, then all the entire data will be lost. 
right so that is why uh, it has bad reliability the reliability in uh, raid 0 is very poor so that is raid 0 then raid 1 uses mirroring now what mirroring basically means is uh, maintaining two identical copies of the data in two different disks so what i basically mean is say a b c d again we have a b c d so when we do mirroring as the name suggests we have the copy so say for example if uh, if some failure occurs in this particular disk, then we will have this particular disk as backup. So that will be helpful. However, one of the cons of RAID 1 is that it is very expensive, right? Because extra space is used for the redundant information. Out here, we are keeping another disk with, with the same information only, right? So it is using some extra space, which makes it very expensive. So that is RAID 1. Now we have RAID 2. So it basically uses bit level stripping. So stripping is nothing but like, yeah, again, uh, dividing, it, uh, dividing the stripping, like splitting the data, splitting the information into different disks basically. So that is done in the bit level in RAID 2. In RAID 3, it is done in the byte level. What happens in RAID 2 is it has uh, for like for, for parity calculation, Hamming code is used. You can just go through the theory of it, nothing uh, that important. Then RAID 3, again, byte level stripping is done. Then in RAID 4, it uses block level stripping with one disk as the parity block. So, <clears throat> so in case, say for example, a failure happens. So for recovery, what you need to do is simply you can XOR all the remaining bits along with the parity bit. We will understand this in the next example. Recovery of only one disk in RAID 4 is possible. Okay, only one disk can be recovered. Say, for example, if more than two disks have failed or two disks have failed, then in RAID 4, recovery won't be possible. Okay, then in RAID 5, again, it uses block level stripping only and one bit. And what uh, what is the better version in RAID 5 is that one parity bit is distributed uniformly among all the disks. Now, what in RAID 4 happens? Say, for example, this is RAID 4. So we have, say, these, say, and these are, and we have one parity, parity block, okay, AP. So if, for example, this parity disk, this parity disk fails, then we will lose the entire data, they, uh, like, it will result in, in a huge loss, right, for RAID 4 if the parity disk is failed. So that is why for better, uh, like the better version of RAID 4 is RAID 5 where one parity bit is distributed uniformly among all disks. So say, for example, uh, like it is not in a single disk, but in all the disks. So one parity bit will be there in all the disks. That is what is RAID 5. Now, uh, RAID 6 is again an extended version of RAID 5 only. What, just the change is that in RAID 5, we will have only one parity bit that is distributed among all the disks. In RAID 6, two parity bits will be distributed uniformly among all the disks. So, these are... Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't get the function of parity bit. What it is doing? It is distributing the data in all the disks. If a uh, Sorry? Parity bit, yeah. Function of parity bit. Okay, so parity is like, uh, like, okay. Just a minute. Parity, parity is basically used to restore the data. Now suppose A1 and A2 you have now, uh, suppose A1 is uh, numeric 5 and a2 is 7 so you can use parity 7 minus 2 is equal to 2 that is for a parity 2 is stored now suppose this disk number one fail so five information regarding 5 is lost but you have the parity 2 and you have the 7 so 7 minus 2 is 5 that is that you can recover 5 so the, likewise you have this parity calculation and this parity can help in restoring if one of the disks fails is it okay <clears throat> i think it will 
<laughs> so how is i mean how do you really uh, i mean the basics of parity how how is it created you 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 devise some mathematical thing hai na there there are having code and different type of codes available so basic idea is suppose a1 is 5 and a2 is 7 so you can use this mathematical function that is 7 minus 5 is 2 and you store 2s parity in in this third disk in in this parity disk for this block block a1 and suppose this a1 is lost then you have 7 and 2 and so you you can reverse this mathematical operation and you can recover this so this is like like it is and there are different codes written for this parity for the calculation of this parity bit so uh, i think this is the uh this is the logic so mathematical mathematical function mathematical coding part may be different but parity you can calculate that way yeah i think it's clear ma'am we can proceed yes it's clear hello yeah yeah ma'am uh, in raid 4 uh, if mm-hmm. the parity block is lost hmm. sir then uh, can't we create another uh, parity block because we have original data set safe but that will be a tedious job right uh, your your one disk is lost then you have to re- physically replace that disk and then right. you have to again redo so it will mm. take it, it will take time it is not that feasible okay okay yeah the cost increases from 0 to 6 is it sorry the cost increases from 0 mm. to 6 is it no it it depends actually uh, so that is just a theory part you can go through it like uh, like yeah you can go through the slides you okay. will get the point with right. it okay. which one is very expensive uh, and ma'am in rate 6 so one question about that is distributed right Sorry? so in yeah, rate 2 parity six, bits so in that uh, uh, data will be again restored i mean So for two parity bits hmm. data will two, data will i mean uh, distributed uniformly uh, this yeah. portion hmm for two parity bits what is this like mean for for all the disks say for example if we have out here if you can see that we have two disk right out here if you can see hmm. that we have we have two disk right so yeah. in both the disk uh, like there will be two parity uh, two parity bits in both the disk that is what we mean when we say uniformly among all the disk like there will that be two parity that. bits out here and two parity bits out here so that okay. means one parity bit is redundant for the other can i say that so the insurance against failure is more protected can i say that ma'am two parity bits Hmm. or different parity bits are each other is redundant to one one another are redundant okay. so two parity this parity bits we are there no yeah so in, the, in both the disk yeah in both the disk that means comparing the previous rate this is more more secure no uh, they won't be redundant actually so they are not redundant Okay. no they they won't be redundant so even if one block is failed then the whole whole disk is failed right oh just a minute i'm getting confused in this question you mean that uh, like the parity bits in both the uh, disk will be same will be redundant is it yeah that's what the question is okay so uh, yeah they will be redundant okay yeah so the only difference is rate 5 uh, will be able to recover hmm. only from a single disk of failure single that's disk right. failure that's right, right. only but one cannot disk. recover from multiple disk whereas no. in rate 6 hmm. you know you can recover from two simultaneous disk failures that's two. what i th- that's hmm. the understanding i have yeah so, yeah okay we can go with example okay so uh we are using a rate four system out here so uh, like the question says a rate four system with five disks stores the name of arvin's alma mater so block a of disk 1 stores this and block okay so these are the values and disk 
got corrupted and disk 5 is the parity disk okay if you can remember that in uh, raid 4 we have one disk for the parity itself then considering that the binary number in each block is representation of an ascii char character which one of the following is erwin's alphameter so remember one thing you should remember the ascii character values okay that will be very helpful for these kind of questions so can you, can you yeah. give a brief of ascii characters like the value of a b c <clears throat> d e in ascii in ascii um, A65, B66, like that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It would be helpful. You just need to have an overview of that thing. That will be helpful for you all. So, okay. So now that disk 4 uh, got corrupted, right? So a failure occurred. So now, in order to get the data of disk 4, what we need to do is we need to XOR with all the remaining, uh, with all the remaining disks. So the remaining disks are 1, 2, 3, and 5. So we need to perform an XOR, uh, like, so the data of disk 1, XOR, the disk 2 data, XOR, disk 3 data, and XOR, disk 5 data. What is this XOR doing? Uh, so you are aware of the XOR table, right? XOR, uh, same value is 0. Different value will be 1. Yeah, that's right. So when we perform an XOR that is exclusive OR, so it will be for the same value, it will be 0. That is 0, 0 will be 0, 1, 1 will be 0. And for the different values, it will be 1. Okay. So this is the XOR table. Okay. XOR. okay. Yeah. So, uh, when we perform an XOR, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. An XOR with disk 2. So, it will be 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So, what will be the value of this? All, all zeros. That's right. It will be all zeros. Then, Since... again, we have to perform an XOR with disk 3. So, when we perform an XOR, 1, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0. Now, what will be the value? It will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Right? Now, again, we have to perform an XOR uh, with disk 5. So, the value is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. So, now it will be 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Yeah, so this will be the uh, this will be the data of disk four. That is how we find out the uh, data. So is it clear to all how we found out the data of disk four? You just need to perform the XOR between uh, uh, between the remaining bits between the remaining blocks. Ma'am, so whatever answer we are getting by doing XOR one and XOR uh, disk one and disk two, that mm -hmm. value we are using for doing XOR with disk three data yeah right? that's right that's right yeah in this okay. one you can do it yeah it so will be easier cumulative uh, i mean we are mm -hmm. doing it that's right mm -hmm. okay so now what we need to find out is we need to find out uh which uh, the name of Irwin's alma mater right so how we will figure it out is so the value of data uh, disk one is one zero zero one zero zero one now what is the value the decimal value of one zero zero one one zero zero one will be Anyone? What will be the so decimal to, value? So we have to take the one, position, positional value. So 1 multiplied by 2 to the power 0, like nine, that, right? Two, yeah, that's right, decimal value. Uh, so uh, this one, is 8 plus 1 and uh, 8 plus 1. Is it 73? 73. Right. It's 73. 73. So now we need to find out the ASCII uh, character of 73. So what is the ASCII character of 73, anyone? So capital A is 65. So 60, 73 is 1, 2, 3, 4. I. That's right. I. So again, uh, we have the same value for disk 4, all, uh, disk 2 also. So we get two I's. And then for disk 3, for 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, what is the uh, decimal value? 
No, I didn't get this decimal value. Listen, you're, you're how you can, you can you give an yeah. example? Yeah. Please. One zero four. Yeah. Zero four. 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 Zero like uh, uh, if i'm talking about 723 if i take out mm. the binary number so we'll get the exact uh, you know 1010 like you know, for i and for like m and c for that directly we can find out okay sure you can do it in that manner also i'm just uh, showing the easier method i guess yes ma'am yeah so decimal value uh, like um, okay so it's like 2 to the power of uh, like Okay, so out here we are having a seven bit one, right? So two to the power zero. So what is the value of two to the power zero? One. 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 Okay. So to, uh, since it is a zero, so we won't consider it as uh, we won't consider. So the value of two one will be zero. Two two will be zero. Two three. Now uh, two to the power three. Sorry. So what is the value of two to the power three? Eight. So eight, eight plus one. Then two to the power four zero two to the power five zero two to the power six. What is the value of two to the power six? And sixty-four. That's right. So sixty-four plus eight plus one equals to seventy-three. That so is how we find. So, ma'am, yeah. wherever there is one, you are taking hmm. two to the power zero, and uh, I mean uh, for uh, zero values, you are aren't calculating the value, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. We have to add it. So out here. Two to the power zero will be zero. Two to the power one will be zero. Two to the power two. What will be the value of two to the power two? Four. Four. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So two to the power three will be zero. Two to the power four. What is the value of two to 16. the power four? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Two to the power five is zero. Two to the power six. What will be the value of two 32. to the power six? Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Sorry. Okay. So now the entire value will be eighty-seven. Sorry. Okay, 84. Yeah. Yeah. So the value of disk three will be 84. Now the what is the ASCII code of 84? T. T. Yeah, that's right. The value of ASCII code for 84 is T. So. So that ASCII value we have to keep remember, right? Hmm. Ma'am, they give it in the exam. ASCII table, they give it in the exam. No, 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 no. We won't. Oh, at least you can give it in bracket. What are the values? Yeah. Uh, It's difficult to. Uh, Only one one value you need to remember. A is equal to sixty-four. Yeah, that's right. Nice. But uh, how to calculate the value? No, no, no. It no. is continuous from sixty-five. It is continuous. Yeah. And for small letters, it is ninety-seven. So it's continuous. Yeah, continuous. So there is a gap. So capital A is sixty-five. Small A is ninety-seven. Yeah. Sometimes there could be number also. Zero starts with forty-eight. And, oh, really? and, and and for unicode what it is anyone remember yeah, unicode because that's uh, 16 digits so i mean it's multilingual so ascii is probably okay okay so the, the instead of ascii they can very well give this unicode <laughs> ma'am utf unicode is not given right because that's like 16 digits multilingual that's no, special no, characters no. yeah no. okay ascii we remember yeah madam in this problem is it given that we, we have to take this jor operation xor operation yes that's right yes it's important where it is given it's in the slides itself okay okay rate 4 rate 4 rate 5 yeah rate 4 rate 5 yeah you need to do xoring thank, thank you yeah okay. it a yeah, practice yeah. question because we remember solving this yes it is from a practice question yeah yeah okay so uh, okay so we have found out the values of disk 1 disk 2 disk 3 now we need to find out the value of disk 4 so it's 1001011 so what will be the decimal value of it 2 to the power 0 75 which is 1 2 to the power 1 which is 2 okay 2 to plus 1 2 to the power 3 which will be 8 8 16 to 64 2 to the power 6 64 64 so 
which makes it k so it will be 75 which makes it k so the value will be iit k mm. so you really like the question the way it is you know really nice question so you can just uh, go through these uh, you I, I hope you also have the solution doc with you also yeah uh, yeah so you is, can go through yeah it's given properly right yeah i mean for this question yes yes in the solution uh, we'll get can it. you check for question number 13 in practice simon okay just a moment In practice assignment, is it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so what is your doubt? I mean, 13, exactly how we find out because the ASCII code is not given like, you know, for desk one and desk two. So that's a doubt. For the 12, I got it. Like how find out the value for block two, block one and two, but. Uh, 13 is a theory question, right? Practice assignment it's a, of week 11. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's a, like a uh, assume that the binary value represents 8 bit ASCII code. What is the data word present inside? Okay, 12 the number question. Okay. Yeah. So 12 question. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I just. Okay. okay. So let me Okay, so assume that the binary values represent 8-bit ASCII code. What is the data word present inside the... Okay, that is related to uh, another question, actually. Yeah, it's a, uh, like upper one. Yeah. 11. Mm -hmm. So I just find out the value for that one. Okay. So like how we proceed for this question that I'm not getting. Okay, so... <clears throat> okay, so... Okay, okay, I got it. Just a minute. Okay, so you got the value of block one and block two, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, by the XOR operation, I find out the yeah. value for that one. So that's mm -hmm. not an issue. But mm -hmm. uh, like in this one, I just didn't get it how to approach for the next question. Okay, because there were uh, two blocks, right? Yeah, so that's why I was confused. And even uh, there isn't like quotes is not given, like 1001, something is given. So we can, you know, just do that. But uh, it is not given. And if it is written is, uh, on the 55.16 slide number, that is on, I think, 11.2 uh, 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 lecture. So, but in that one, I didn't get it anything like how to approach. Okay, so. So out here in the question, it is specified that assume that the binary values represent 8-bit SK code, right? Yeah. In the question, if you can see that we are following the block size of 4 bits, right? Yeah. So what you need to do is you need to merge, basically. Okay. Yeah. So disk 1 and uh, disk 1 and disk 2 will merge. Okay. Then disk 3 and disk 4 will merge. Then disk uh, so for block 1, basically. Yeah, yeah. Merge means it will be uh, like, uh, like, uh, it's for... like for disk one, it is 0, 1, 0, 0. For disk two, it is 0, 1, 0, 0. Now, yeah. when we go to the, when we assume that it is a 8 bit, what it will be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. So, uh, so like that's... after that, you know, just we find out the value of all the that's letters. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You find okay. out the decimal value and then you get the SK yeah. order. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's that about week 11. In week 12, we didn't have much. Uh, like uh, uh, we discussed about query processing. Sorry, so, ma'am. Uh, in week 11, uh, we, are, we are done with all the topics. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. I have a query. Yes. For disk file, you are not uh, taking the ASCII value. Disk file? No, it is a parity disk, right? So for parity disk, we won't be taking the value. Okay, okay. Yeah. I have a query for week 11. Okay. I mean, week uh, 11, we also have this talk, topic of recovery with early log release. Okay. Uh, op operation logging and uh, mm -hmm. physical undo, logical undo, all those okay. portions. Okay. So, so um, like, yeah. I'd request you to, like, just go through the theory part of it. You don't need to go so much in depth. Like, just go through the theory part. That will work. Is that important for uh, exam point of view or, uh, I mean, we can... That I can't really tell, okay. right? Like, okay. we can just go through the slides. That will be in more than enough. Ma'am, one more question, like in graded okay. assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, question is asking, what is the storage capacity of, uh, you know, uh, 4, RAID 4? And if it is 8, uh, disks are given. So what is that? Graded like it is 75... Yeah, graded which question? Uh, ma'am, it's a nine. Uh, nine question number nine. So, what is the question? Uh, ma'am, question is saying for RAID one and RAID four, what mm -hmm. is the capacity for that one? Storage efficiencies for RAID one, it will be you know fifty percent always, whatever it is, it's ten twenty or whatever. But for yeah. RAID four, we hmm. know that it is seventy five percent for three disk, right? Yeah. So for eight disk, what is that one? Like, what is the capacity for that? Okay, so one disk is a parity disk, right? Yeah, yeah. And all other disks are data disk. Yeah. So, like... Uh, so, if it is three disk, then there will be a, like... Or it is seven disk and one is parity. Like, yeah, like that? so... Yeah. So, seven by eight uh, multiplied no, by 100, right? Not eight, right? Uh, is Why? it eight disk? Yeah, it's a eight is given. Okay. Eight disk so, then it will be, yeah, seven by eight. But my answer is, uh, I think, not cutting. Let me check. 7 by 8 in, into 100. Because we are figuring out the percentage, right? Yeah, just check. Uh, let me check. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay, okay thank you. Okay. Ma'am, can you go to this uh, week 11 practice assignment, question 11 and 12? Okay, just a minute. Practice assignment. Are you sharing your screen or should I share? No, no, just, just a minute. I'm just checking. That was just discussed, right? I think. Yeah, we just discussed it. Yeah, ma'am, just discussed it. Okay, I'll share my screen just a moment. Can we solve this one? I mean, I know it was discussed, but I couldn't make out. Yeah. Okay, let me just take this. 11, right? Uh, 12. Okay. 11 and 12. I mean, both are related. Yeah, yeah, both are related. Yes. Okay, let me... Okay, is my screen visible? Hello? Yes, visible. Yes, Samit. Samit, please mute. Samit. Okay. So, uh, it is a RAID 5. Uh, okay. RAID 5 storage system with similar arrangement of parity blocks as described in, okay, slide, is used for storing the following data. So out here, we are having a 4-bit four 4-bit four block size, right? So what is happening is, according to the figure, disk 2 has crashed. What data is present in the two blocks of disk 2? So we need to find out the values of disk 2 in both the blocks. So what we did previously, we performed an XOR operation, right? Between the remaining, uh, remaining disk. So at first, we'll figure out for block 1. So it will be 0, 1, 0, 0. XOR 0100 XOR 0001 XOR 0101 
zero one. Okay. So. So, ma'am, here the sequence. We can start at one, then three. The order doesn't matter, right? Actually, the order does matter. That is how you will perform the XOR, right? Because at first you will do it between these. Then whatever answer you get will do with this. Then whatever answer you get will do with this. So, so, so my, yeah. So my question is: Should we start with three, four, five, then come to one, right? In that sequence? No, 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 no. You should start with one only. One, three, four, five. Okay. Why? Okay. Three, four, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it will be zero, zero, zero. Then when we perform an XOR with zero 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 one now what will be the value yeah i just want to know if you are clear on uh, this one zero zero one zero 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 zero, 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 zero one. one yeah then again when we perform an exo zero one zero one what will be the value now zero zero one zero one one zero yeah so the value of this two in block one will be this one will be zero one zero zero okay yeah now Okay. Yeah. Ma'am, will, now we need to will find that ever will that ever end as zero 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 all zeros? Yeah, out here if you can see we got all yeah, zeros. We saw right? that, no, if it is ending as zero zero zero, then everything. Yeah, is that zero. would be that's fine. That's fine. So then the ASCII value for zero we have to find it out, huh? Zero but will be zero. Yeah. Um. Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay. So that's a numerical one only. That's not alphabetic. Right? Yeah. For same values, we are putting value of zero, and for different, we are putting values one. Five, one. That's it. Right. Okay. okay. Now we'll find out the value for uh, disk two of block two. So it is one zero one. Then we have to perform with disk three. That is zero one zero zero. So what is the value? Uh, zero zero zero, zero, zero one. one. That's right. Okay. Then the next one is zero one zero zero. Now what is the value? Zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. zero one zero one. That's right. Okay. Now finally we have zero zero one. Now what is the value? Zero, zero one, one zero, zero zero. That's right. Again, so this is the value of this two or block two. So oh. you got you got this one, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now twelve number. Just a minute. So the twelve number. What is the difference between four block and uh, eight bit uh, ASCII codes? And eight bit. Be... Okay. So eight. This is a four bit. Zero yeah. one zero zero. If you can see. Yeah. Now what will be an eight bit? Eight bit will be one zero zero. Say for example. So this is eight bit, and this is four bit. Yeah. No. Total no. Values. Finally, the ASCII values will end up be different. Yeah, that's yeah, that's for sure. It will be different because the value you will get will be different, right? So out here, the value that you will get for zero, uh, this will be four only, right? But out here, you will get a different value. So that's a separate table we have to refer them. That is why uh, in the question it is specifically mentioned that assume to the figure uh, disk two. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Assume that the binary values represent eight bit ASCII code. What is the data word present inside this RAID file? So, okay. Yes, so now. I think your screen is not changing. Okay. So I, I haven't uh, pasted the question. I'll just, I have okay. just read it out loud. Do you want me okay. to paste the question? No, no, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. okay. So now, uh, now we need to find out uh, what word is getting, uh, you know, aligned up. So. Uh, since we have four bit out here, now we need to consider it as eight bit, right? So what we will do? So we'll uh, merge, as I said. So disk one and disk two will be merged. So it will be one zero 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 zero. Oh, sorry, zero one zero zero. So what will be the value of this? Okay, let me write it down in a better way. Sorry. Sixty-eight. Okay. So yeah. at first yeah, we have zero, zero one zero zero. So it's sixty-eight. So what is the SK code? D capital D block D. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then D. next, what we need to consider is disk three and disk four. So it will be zero one zero 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 one. So what will be the value of this? 
I think it's 65. 65. So what will be 65? A. 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 Oh, sorry. A. OK, remember, we should not consider the parity disk. And out here, uh, disk 5 is the parity disk. OK, so then we'll consider the no, block it's two. It's RAID 5, no? RAID 5 is uh, distributed parity. OK. So, so we have to combine the rows, How right? do you know which one is a parity thing now? Because yeah, one of the. And it is, is given parity. in the question that disk 5 is parity. So we have yeah, to... disk five is parity, and uh, disk five of uh, block one is parity, and disk five of uh, four of block two is parity. It's mentioned in the question, I guess. Where, ma'am? Can you exactly? It's not tell? mentioned anywhere. Not mentioned. In the previous question, no? Mentions as mentioned in the slide 55.16. It's referring to some slides. Mm. So, if you can remember, just a minute, uh, the way. Is it something that by default last two dicks will be parity? I think, so, I think a... we have to assume that the parity is stored in separate uh, blocks and this is pure data blocks. I guess that's the only way we can proceed with this. It was mentioned disk 5 is parity for block 1. That was for and... RAID 4. That was for RAID 4. RAID 4 has a dedicated parity block. I mean, disk. This is, this is RAID 5, so it is... Uh, yeah, RAID 5... It's it is a mixed one. It is distributed. It is distributed. Right? So I think the only way we can assume is both these blocks are going to be data blocks, and then yeah. proceed the same way. Hmm. Just a minute. Then where is the parity? Okay, parity out will here. Be separate, no? It'll be in. They, they have not shown the parity bits. Okay, out here in this uh, disk four, if you can see, uh, sorry, read five, if you can see that we are considering it in this manner. Like uh, in the four disk, the first one is uh, like, the last one is the parity disk. Then in the like third disk, the second one is the parity disk. In the second uh, disk, the third one, and in this manner, basically. So diagonally. Yeah, yeah diagonally. First, third, second, yeah. and fourth. Like Sorry? That. First, and second, third, and fourth, like that. Yeah. Hmm. We have to consider. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so in similar, uh, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in this test three, you're getting one first one as the parity. This A, 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 P. a P is the parity disk, B P hmm. is the parity disk, C P is the parity disk, D P is and the DP. parity disk. Okay, okay, okay. I can share my screen. Okay, so if you understood that disk 5 is the parity disk and disk 4 block 2 is the parity disk. Okay, so now we have got DA. Now, what we will do, we need so to get one. one yeah. Doubt uh, here. When we did the calculations for disk 2, mm -hmm. we assume then those are the parity bits. No, no, no. Look, when sort, you right? no. When, when you, you need to sort, find out. Okay. When you need to find out the data, right, you don't need to worry about uh, like the parity disk or the remaining disk. You can just perform the XOR between all the remaining disk and the parity disk. Okay. Yeah. But when finding out this uh, value, I mean. Yeah, yeah. SD you should character. not consider parity disk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now what will be the value of this? Uh, like it is disk 1 and disk 2 of block 2. So what will be the value of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0? It's 4 plus 8, 12 plus 4 32, plus 44. 84? Yeah. 84, not 44. 84. 84. Yeah, so 84. what will be the value of 84? Uh, 84 was uh, T, I guess. Yeah. Letter T, yeah. Yeah, okay. So now 
we'll check for disk 3 and disk 5 of block 2 because disk 4 is a parity disk. So 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now what will be the value of this? 65. 65. Yeah. So the value is eight. So finally, the word is data. <laughs> Data. Data yeah. lost. Yeah, it was because uh, we looked at the parity thing, then we got the right value. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we won't have. Mm -hmm. So, this has key we will have to remember for each character. That's right. Yes. Hmm. So, in the second yeah. one, that 0100 0, 0 on the left is actually coming from disk 3, then disk 5, which was right. disk 4, right? So, I know because there's just. It just happens to be the same, so that's also I just want to. Okay. Yeah, that is a co complete coincidence, right? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. So, ma'am, we need to remember yeah, yeah, this, is, uh, yeah. like, RAID, uh, which are the, the order. parity disk. Parity yeah, the disk order of parity disk. disk. If it is RAID 4, right, remember that the last disk, or most probably we would have mentioned, but if we wouldn't have mentioned, remember <laughs> that the last disk is a parity disk. In RAID 5, you need to remember that all the all the disk will have one parity disk, right? It so would be diagonally, to, right? Yeah, it would five. be diagonal. That, yeah, that's right. And we remember, we need to remember like uh, which uh, disk will be the parity disk in rate five. Hmm. That number. Yeah, and uh, for, when you are figuring out the uh, word, basically, if you if you just have to find out the values or the data of the disk which has been, uh, if you can see out there, yeah, then you don't need to worry about the parity disk. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma why we have not considered data in the disk five? This one. It's a parity. It is a parity. It is a parity bit. That is why we are not considering it. When to figure out the word, we should not consider the parity bit. But it's a distributed. No, parity right? Yeah, but we are finding out the word, right? So we don't need to uh, like uh, carry the. Parity. It's a five character. Sorry? It will have sum up, sum up the uh, like disk wise, right? Isn't it with the four, five characters? I mean, it is not mentioned. You need not need to consider the data into the disk five. It's not not where mentioned. Uh, I did not get your point. I'm sorry. I mentioned it is not anywhere mentioned. You do not need to consider the data in the disk five. No, yeah, it's rate five. Rate five. Yeah, it's a rate. And the slide fifty five point sixteen. Mm. That this we because it is it is a practice question, right? In the exam, you don't need to worry. We'll specify. Yeah. It. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ma'am, only one disk is failing in all example. If two disk fails, then out here two disk are fail. Okay, one disk. Okay. Disc yeah. So in some. Fail. Yeah. Okay. So say for example, disk two is failing. Uh, okay. So if uh, if two if more than two is failing it will not be possible, right? It will only be possible in RAID six. Yeah, two. It can recover from two failures. Yeah, yeah. For RAID five. Not for RAID four and RAID five. Only one. In RAID failing. two also we can recover uh, at max two because four disk and three pair TR is there, so we can. But uh, for the correctness we can only uh, come in for one because in the lecture it is saying that. So okay. is it right? Yeah, if it's mentioned in the lecture, it's right. We don't need to worry no. about it. Okay, so week 12. Yeah, Frank, please Important upload uh, these slides in the uh, in our portal. Sure, yeah, I'll upload it in the classroom. Uh, is classroom, yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am, that will be better. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, I won't be going that much in depth of week 12 because uh, only the major parts are these only and we have discussed these very briefly in the sessions. So, uh, query processing and uh, measuring of query costs. So, measuring of query costs, if you can remember, which can be done using the number of seeks, number of block transfers. So, if you are not quite clear about it, we have discussed in the week 12 activity and practice session. So, it has been discussed very briefly. So I'd request all of you to go through it. Then we have also learned about join operation, which involved the block nested join, the nested loop join. So yeah, you can go through them. 
then we have also discussed about query optimization where the expression tree and all took place so that has also been discussed in the open session of week 12 then we have also discussed about some equivalence rules of week 12 so uh, yeah i am not going to go in much depth I, i'll just brush up some of the topics that's that yeah so that's that about week 12 ma'am so will you please take a question for if you are trying to explain the topic uh if you want to go through some uh, yeah as i Christians. said that in the sessions we have discussed it in very brief so i request all of you to go through the session it will be very has cool. join is not there can you explain that everything is explained only the hash is missing hash join where is hash join in week two wait let me check. Uh, it is uh, there in the evaluation plan, but you don't need to go through it that much. It's fine. It's just an example. We have just taken an, an example how an evaluation plan basically works. Okay. You don't need to worry that much about it. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah. So, if anybody else have any other doubt, yeah, you can please feel free. So Come up, just briefly go through this week 12. Yeah, it would be beneficial. Okay. Don't go in depth, but at least uh, from overview. You Discuss some it. important yeah. point and problem. Of week 12, yeah. Okay, just then. Maybe we can do that problem in uh, practice assignment, question number five and uh, four yes, and five. Yes, four five. Sorry, week 12, is it? Week 12, practice assignment, four and five. Okay, just a minute, let me check. Okay, so this is week 12, right? Uh, sorry, uh, the four number question, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so out here we are given some relations, employee relation, project relation, and allotment relation. We have to identify the most optimized expression tree from the given option that finds out names of all projects allotted to E name Raj and the project location, location in Chennai. We assume that employee is much larger than employee. Okay, so what is your approach? Yeah, anyone? Can you zoom it a little bit? Yeah. First, we can do natural join between uh, allotment and project and uh, I think the approach should be to have the smallest, the join that gives you the smallest result Number first, of tuples. Mm. and then uh, do the next join with the remaining. Mm. So here they have said employee and allotment is a much larger than allotment with project, right? So, so that basically, we should not subdivide yeah. allotment. 
so if we subset the apply first then it will uh, you know remove the number of i mean reduce the number of combinations correct and then we should avoid doing it with allotment do it with project hmm. so join employee with project and then resultant join it with allotment uh, we need to get the employee id and uh, do the filter on employee first so that you will get one tuple join it with project and then uh, do a filter on project also to location hmm. and then uh, join it with allotment Hello. 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 I'm audible. Yes. I'm yes. Sorry, I guess I lost. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, please. Yeah. What is your approach? Sir? So what do you think will be the correct? Uh, will be the most optimized expression tool. Ma'am, does it use a top to bottom approach or a bottom to top approach, ma'am? Bottom to top. Approach. Bottom to top. Okay. okay. Then first is not good actually. Yeah. If we do filter at the lower level, that's good to reduce the. Speed. Yes, correct. First we filter, then we join, and again then we. Um, Join it and project out the name, employee name, project name. Sorry. Third option will be good, I think. No, I think fourth is good. It mentioned that like uh, between two joins, one was expensive, one was slightly cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we should uh, uh, forgot allotment project or employee project. I don't know. I think the fourth one, ma'am. Okay, fourth one. Why? Why so? You know, like uh, on the left hand side, to... we are selecting, you know, a name of the person name Raj from employee Haj. table, right? Hmm. Right. And then, and then uh, on the right hand side also, we are just selecting the Chennai. So we are reducing the number of, you know, columns. That's right. Yeah. That's and and right. then we are, do and then we are doing, you know, natural join with allotment. Yeah. And later on, so now number of columns are very less. So hmm. finally, we are doing natural join again, and then we are projecting a P name. Hmm. P name. Yeah. So what is the difference between third and fourth option? Okay, okay. Just just a second, ma'am. 
this is called here. Yeah. I think here the natural joint uh, on the left hand side is happening between name, name and allotment, right? Employee and allotment, and mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, giving us in the question it said that yeah. it is a very large compared to that's right, yeah, allotment and project. Mm. Mm -hmm. project. So, option D is so correct. Fourth, so, the fourth one is correct, right? Huh? Yeah, mm. fourth one would be correct. So, so clearly in this case, three-way cross-gen is definitely discouraged. So maximum we can do a two-table two cross-gen and uh, we prefer one with the allotment and the location. Or what, is three -way what is three-way natural join? Where three -way natural I, mean, three, I mean, if we combine all three, like, you know, A comma All B three tables together, right? Uh, that will be like a, then it will crash. Uh, it will be a massive number of tables. Yes. But we don't need to do that as it is already mentioned that uh, we can do it for other fund project and what is the guideline? Do the cross join as early as possible and do the project uh, as ma'am well. all the, all these concepts are available in this uh, practice assignment open sessions uh, we we can go through it right yeah yeah yes. Yes, you can go through it. We have discussed this in brief in the sessions. Ma'am, is it right to make a thumb rule that do the cross join as early as possible and delay the project as late as possible? Sorry? Do cross the cross from from bottom up approach, do the cross join as, as early as possible mm. and delay the project to the top as we reach out to. Is it the right thumb rule? To reduce the complexity of the query processing, we should filter the the relations which has the most number of tuples first. Because in a cross gen, you are doing m cross n, right? So if m is very large, you want to filter out the m to smaller sets so that way, when you are doing a cross join, your Cartesian product will be less, your complexity will be less. That's the approach. No. So, so going, back is... to, going back to my clarification is that do the joins as quick as possible. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can we complete this one and then I have a couple of questions so we can get into questions if there are no more concept to discuss. Okay. Ma'am, my question is yeah, that please answer one. that one. Yes. Yeah. What is it? Can you repeat? Do the cross join uh, from bottom up approach. Hmm. Okay, our objective is to reduce the number of columns. Is that right? Yeah. If that is the case, means uh, we got to do the cross joins as, as as early as possible, then delay the project late. No, so how, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, just remember that, uh, like, if out here, if you can mm -hmm. see that we are already giving the condition, right, location equals to Chennai. Yeah. So when we give that, so it is already filtering, say, for example, there were a total of 15 tuples. Then when we put the condition that the location should be Chennai, the it got uh, narrowed down to, say, two or three uh, tuples, right? Okay, so then okay. when we performed the those two three tuples with the allotment tuples and when we performed a natural join between them we got a less number of tuples right, right. as compared to if we would have joined uh, two tables right so remember right. those things. right how you can get try to think how you can optimize the more uh, the expression tree with uh, the least number of cause basically right yeah Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So. So then, which one is the correct, ma'am? Four or third? Third. Option four. No. Not third. No. Four. No. Remember, in the question, it's given that we assume that employee natural join allotment is much larger than allotment natural join project. Employee natural join is much larger. Yeah. Than allotment. Yeah. So the cost out here would be much <clears throat> more than out here. So we need to get the one which is the most optimized. <coughs> okay. So is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Ma'am, if you can just briefly go through that equivalence rule. Equivalence rule is all uh, like 
it's all uh, theory right you can just go through the theory part i've discussed it in the sessions so you can go through so yeah just in brief because <clears throat> on brief not not in depth just given overall ideas <clears throat> samit wants a summary of summary no actually i haven't gone through this all those things yeah so you can just go through the uh, slide in sessions right uh, like Yes, ma'am. Just five to ten minutes. Just brief it. Uh, I only ma ask uh, any question. Ma'am, can you go to the next question? Like you know, uh, just I have a doubt. Like when we are using the yeah. nested loop join and the block. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like in this one, we are using the uh, nested loop join. So right. there is no nowhere is written like you know just we have to use. So can you tell me like uh, how we identify that? What isn't written? Like it is not written that uh, we are using in this one nested loop join, right? Yeah, we are using nested loop join out here. So, like, how we check that we are we we have to use the nested loop join? That's I'm asking. It's in the slides, isn't it? Like the formula and all, right? You yeah, are asking formula. I'm not saying that one. You know, no, just it, is, it is written now. First slide written. 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 What time is still written? Nested loop join. Yes. Consider a nested loop join. Hmm. Yeah. In 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 the beginning only it's written. Consider a nested loop join, right? Oh, sorry. I just didn't say it. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. Briefly, the equivalence rule, ma'am. Okay. okay. Okay, let me just open just a minute. Only forty percent of the uh, interim exam marks will be considered, right? Yes. What? What? Okay. Oh, grading. Yes, yes. So if I score a sixty out of hundred, well, final score will be twenty-four. Twenty-four. Right. Twenty-four. Yes. Okay. So, uh, okay. So uh, the first of the equivalence rule is conjunctive selection operations can be deconstructed into a sequence of individual selections so out oh, here is not visible are you presenting something okay my screen is yes, yes it's visible yeah, it's visible, it's visible. Um, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. okay so uh, out here theta 1 and theta 2 are the conditions that needs to be selected and e is the expression okay so what does this particular rule specify is that uh, like this particular uh, operation is equals to this particular operation now so say for example if you write say select age equals to, uh, greater than 25 and say marks marks uh, equals to say 100 okay and then you write say uh, be the uh, the table be student okay so you can also write it down as age greater than 25 and then in bracket marks equals to 100 and then student so that is what the first rule specifies that you can write it in both the ways it's just the conjunction selection operation right remember that you should use the conjunction operation only Okay. okay, so that is the first rule. The second rule is selection operations are commutative. So uh, out here, if you can see theta 1 and in bracket, we have used select theta 2 and then the expression. So in uh, 
like according to this rule, we can also specify it as so. Say for example, we are writing it as say age greater than twenty five, and in okay, yeah, out here I've written. So say we are writing it in this manner, right? So according to this rule, we can also write it down as marks equals to hundred. And in the bracket, we'll write age greater than 25. And in the bracket, we'll write student. So that is what this particular uh, rule specifies. OK, selection operations are commutative. Okay. Then the next uh, the next uh, rule is only the last in a sequence of, yeah. Yeah. You said something conjunctive means that and condition should be and, there, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Conjunction yes. means and. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then the next uh, rule is only the last in a sequence of projection operations is needed. The others can be omitted. OK, so now say, for example, the f in this particular expression. At first, we are we are writing that. Uh, OK, at first we are writing, say, age greater than 25. OK, then the next uh, 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 the outside projection is, say, marks greater than 100. Okay, and the last one is, uh, and the last one is, uh, say, uh, award. City, city okay, yeah, what you said, sorry, uh, Chennai is Chennai. okay, city equals to, yeah, city Chennai. Chennai. Okay, so uh, when we uh, perform the this particular expression, right, will ultimately only get the uh, will uh, the city will only be projected, right. So that is why we can simply omit all these uh, other 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 operations, and we can directly write the last one in the sequence. That is L one, if you can see, because ultimately only the city will be uh, projected. So you can write it down as uh, projection of L one and the expression. So that is what this particular rule specifies. Then the next uh, rule is selections can be combined with Cartesian products and theta join so okay so okay so uh, it was like say for example again if we use no, just uh, one small uh, in the earlier one <clears throat> in the projection part mm -hmm. first we are ln is projected for the relation e yeah when l n minus one when l n minus one is projected it will mm -hmm. be projected on the outcome of that pi ln of e or it will be the once again projected on e e only it will be projected on e no, no it will be outcome minus... no, ma'am sorry no if it is outcome, it outcome then outcome, i have a question suppose from the relation city and name if you first project on name but remember hmm. this is not a condition right this is the project operation right so that's a project operator yeah so, so you are you are projecting ln here right yeah so how can you uh, like check from that it is not a condition out here these okay, so no, just uh, just make make it simple if you write pi uh, write a statement ma'am just beside yeah. that yeah. pi of name project name mm -hmm. then bracket then uh, project uh, project city From table T, say the relation is T. Okay. Now T is having only two column, name and city. Hmm. What will be the outcome of this? The outcome will be name. Only the name, not the city, because only the last one in the sequence will be considered. Oh, I thought key from the initial table only city get projected, and from that name get projected. No. 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 Amen. It's a very interesting question, ma'am. Then the, our understanding is that we start from the innermost query, right? Yeah. Like when sigma comes into picture, that selection part. So we start mm -hmm. from the innermost query, right? And whatever number of tuples we get, then the next query is applied on that, and then next, and then and so on, right? But out here in the second oper in the second rule, if you can see, select operations are commutative. So out here, say for example, if we are uh, considering that marks equals to hundred, and then mm -hmm. the outer condition is that age is greater than twenty five. So right. so that will be equal to, uh, like, 
marks uh, uh, this particular being outside and uh, this particular uh, condition being inside out here if you can see and that comes from this particular operation so right. when we perform a conjunction so we can write it in this manner also so when we can write it in this manner we can also change the uh, sequence of the condition so the condition doesn't matter the sequence so of the what, you know, that, that's what samit is asking now like in the in this sigma only say for example sigma marks 100 from a student table right okay. so yeah. this query will give me all the students your marks is equal to 100 right am i right okay and then the next query, the outer query is greater than 25. So out of those tuples, now it will give only those tuples where age is 25, right? Okay, so, I guess I made a mistake. Okay, so these are projection operation, not the right. conditions. Yes, so sir. I've done the mistake out there that I have projected, I have uh, shown some conditions. So don't consider it as conditions. These are just projections out here, if you can see. So, so it, it is not project the city. So at first, in this example, it will project the city from the table T. Then uh, when we come outside, it will project the name from the table T. So that is why ultimately it will only project the name uh, table, uh, uh, the name attribute. So that uh, that is why we will simply we can simply consider the outermost one, the last in the series. In project yeah. operator, you can't give any condition, right? No, project no, operator no, is for projecting, do. right? For no, inside that project city is equal to Chennai. I can't write that. I have to take select city is equal to Chennai, then project name. Yeah, that's right. Okay, for okay, the condition, we use a mm. select operator, right? Yeah. Yes, I have one question. Yeah. So, like if we are projecting city at the inner query, we have to have the name along with it. How can we project name at the Top one then, because name yes. is not there. I mean, if we are not we are pulling the name from the inner query, how will we get the name from the outer query? I mean, the inner from the inner query, how can we get the name if the name is not inside the? I, I mean, the name column is not there in the inner query. Actually, I think the main relation it's not changed. Projection operation means the relation table remains same. I am projecting which one I want to see. That is why the entire table gets same. When when the next projection is something on, in a different column, it will just project on that column. It will not. But in select operation, <clears throat> when I'm giving some condition in between temporary, I will create a table with that condition and then try to project or select further operation. It probably in this way. Uh, am I right? That in case of Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I'm am. am I right? <laughs> so, like, um, okay. I'm not getting the point, I guess. Yeah, so Samit, uh, what are you asking uh, that project operation is not cumulative, right? No, not cumulative. I, I'm just saying ki, uh, my question is when I'm projecting something on say E mm -hmm. and then after that in outer query, I'm once again projecting something. The mm -hmm. initial doubt is when I'm projecting the inner, innermost. So I have only said name and city, I am only have the name now. Okay. So if I want to project in city, where day I find the city? This is the initial doubt that I have. Okay, so like suppose in E, there are four attributes. So suppose name, age, city, and say pin code, okay? And then we are projecting only two columns, say name and city, right? And after that, we are only projecting name. So at last, only uh, according to equivalence, only uh, name we are projecting, right? Correct. That is correct. But if the innermost, outermost query have the name hmm. and the innermost projection do not have name, then out, outermost projection will uh, uh, do not have anything, right? No, no. Innermost should have that particular attribute that yeah. is in the uh, okay. outermost. Then, then it is the, logically connected. Sir, you can see L1 is at the last, right? 
So, so it would be there at inner 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 relation. For that example. my attribute that L one that I want to project in uh, project L one, that attribute must present in project yeah. of L two. Yes. So yes. it should have been mentioned. L one is just uh, subset equal to or subset of L two. Dot 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 up to L D. Yeah. L one right. is subset okay. of L n. You can see L n. Right. 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 Yeah. That is. Not. We have to assume that. Then, Otherwise, yeah. you'll get a null set. It's like, yeah. you know, in a SQL query, select uh, name from, and then within bracket, if you have a subquery, select uh, city and something else. So if the outer query uh, out, uh, attribute is not available in inner query, then you'll get a null set. Uh, I, I think the confusion came because we were treating them the independent columns. But now what has been yes. told that, you know, the L1 is the subset of LN. LN. Yeah. Now it has been told that L1 is the subset of LN. It means L L1 is a part of LN, right? The confusion came that first of all we are projecting LN, so I am going to get only LN. No, no, LN is a set of attributes. Confusion came from so LN, L2, LN, LN, these are the set of attributes. Okay. Okay, individual attribute. Yeah. Okay, they are not individual attributes. No, no, not individual. Set of attributes. Set of attributes. So suppose in E there are five attributes. And LN is consist of the three attributes, a name, age, and location. And then L2 will consist of only two attributes, name and age. And at the last, say L1 is only age or only name. Right? Okay, so compound attribute basically. We, we have done it. Let's relate okay, it to something it. that we have already done, right? So if somebody says select the name of the coach where you know, for the team ID is equal to this, right? So first in the subquery, we have to include the attribute that is required. So like that, assuming that is from one single relation. So obviously we'll do that directly, but it's, uh, I think it's trivial. I think let's move on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, easy. Move on. Don't get confused. Yes. Only that L1 is a set of attributes, right? L1, L1. Yeah, clear. L1 must yeah. be a subset of it. It's very clear, sir. Yeah, yes. let's Got move uh, in the interest of time. We already discussed this in detail. Yeah, you can watch the session also. Yes, we're just worried we may miss some important concepts. So. No, only these 12, I think 12 rules are there. You just need to go through yeah, it. Yeah, you that just is... need to brush up once. That's that. That means 9, 10, 11, we need to focus a lot. Everything is right, but we don't have the time. So yeah. So so your sigma is time time less than ten, right? That's your sigma operator. Okay, let so let, let her complete. Uh, there was some complete. Yes, ma'am, please. Okay. So selections can be combined with Cartesian products and theta gram. So basically, uh, it can be done like uh, okay using. Yeah, so say for example, we have age greater than 25 and we can write it as say student and say department. I'm just, I'm just taking an example, okay? You don't need to like think it through. So uh, like we can do some uh, like, yeah, so I have, uh, that is what I was saying, Samit. I have discussed all of these in very brief details in the session. So you can go through it. It will take a lot of time right now if I start all these uh, rules. So these are just rules. You can just go through them. Session, right? We have discussed in brief. In open and activity session, you have yeah. discussed in brief. Yeah, I have discussed it in brief details, like with examples. So okay, sure. it will be very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. ma'am. So can we take question ma'am now? Just you know, yeah, yeah. very very short questions, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go. Uh, ma'am, the difference between logical and physical undo, ma'am. Okay, difference. I think one question is there in in term in one of the set related to you know physical and logical. If it is not a quick answer, then we can leave it. There is no guarantee that this question will come, so I can move to the next question, right? Yeah, uh, logical undo and physical undo, like, okay, in the slide it is given that restoring old values is physical undo and uh, instead insertions are undone by executing a deletion. 
these are just uh, like i'd say these are just theory you can just go through the theory part you no know, some question was there related to this okay no problem ma'am uh, ma'am just a uh, uh, silly doubt you know in that uh, uh, python dbm dbm is connectivity right right uh, uh, when we use that you know cursor dot fetch many and within the parenthesis two correct two or three right so it means yeah. we 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 are getting only two lines right uh, two tuples or three tuples only whatever is written inside the fetch many right yes yes i think in the fetch many and that denotes the size of the tuples uh, two tuples hello ma'am are you there ma'am hello hello uh, yes yes sir i think i have lost connection later again okay so what is yes. the doubt yeah you sir i asked that you know in python dbms connectivity huh? uh, when we write that result equal to cursor dot fetch many right mm -hmm. and within the par parenthesis we are passing a number say 2 or 3 it means we are getting only two tuples or three tuples yeah. right two tuples yeah and yeah, if you don't specify the size yes uh, yes it it will, it will bring all it will bring all right no no uh, i think it's uh, default value is 1 a uh, default default value one my mistake which yeah. all brings all right yeah which all brings uh, yeah as a few cell so after this there will be a question like uh, print number of count print reject you know number of uh, count so instead of two it is giving the all the count like four as per the query uh, yeah. the outcome will contain four tuples right whatever query was written in the question hmm. as per it the result will contain four tuples but the moment i am passing this command that cursor dot fetch many within the parenthesis 2 hmm. it means it should ideally bring only two tuples right hmm. and if i am printing the number of count only hmm. you know uh, count result so it should give me only two na is it uh, cursor dot row count uh, <laughs> cursor dot yes i think it's cursor dot row count yes ha. So we are no no no. It is inside the print command. Sorry, it is inside, yeah, inside the, the print, print command. command. Cursor dot row count, right? Okay, yeah. Cursor dot so, row count. Yeah. So basically, what row count will do? It will count a number of tuples in that uh, in the uh, like uh, original output. answer. Original output. Original output. answer. Yeah. We are not printing that. You must be seen that. Okay. So we are stored uh, in the that fetch all in particular variable. We are not printing that variable. We are printing cursor dot row count, right? I think that is the question. Yes, that is the reason. Huh? So this is the yeah. tricky part. So here the fetch many within the parenthesis two. It's misleading. We are not right? printing it, right? Yes. Yeah, we are just so storing the, the variable. That's the catch. Okay, thank you, sir. And the and the similar silly question, uh, similar very easy question. Like, uh, uh, sir, when we use that, you know, uh, in a SQL query at the end of the query, that line three or line one, it means I have to get only one line or three line, right? Uh, 93 limited by limit sorry limit limit 1 or limit 3 uh, top 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 1 or top 3 rows uh, limit 1 limit 3 uh, yes limit. yeah limit 1 or limit 3 in the in the same way sometimes very specifically we mention that fetch three lines it means i will get only three lines right hmm. but when it is written that less than 2 so either i should get one line or two line when less than 2 is given less than 2 yeah in one of the question it is given that you know Uh, fetch many less than two. Not fetch many, uh, less than two. Something that the limiting command in place of the word limit, it is given that less than two. Hmm. I think I need to check that. Maybe, maybe count star less uh, than two having clause. Something yeah. Is not yeah, there. Probably, uh, probably have a having clause. Okay, few seconds. Then I can post this in discussion yeah, yeah. with the question. And few seconds. How red efficiency is calculated? Or uh, storage efficiency? Uh. Like what is uh, utilization upon? No, yeah, yeah, of, uh, yeah. What is the utilization of red? This one. Uh, yeah. So how that is calculated? A uh, simple formula. I think uh, number of digs utilized upon total number of digs. That is the utilization, right? Okay, like that. But but the, the, when two discuss in parallel, and uh, it is being said that so many tuples are there, mm -hmm. and uh, so many tuples are in this one, and so many tuples are in this two. Uh, so many tuples are meant. Two two digs for. Yeah, yeah, two digs. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I think uh, I need to go to the question that uh, you can pose okay. that question. Okay. 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 Just one second. One more. 
they'll typically give the number of discs and rate five. If it is rate five, one will be used for parity. Yeah. Let's say it is a eight disc. So seven will be used for data. One will be used for parity. So then you're using one by, you're losing one by eight. So your efficiency will be seven by eight. Yes, yes, right. Yeah. The, what, what is the worst myth that can you come again in a slow So if it is it's typical, where they have to mention number of discs used. And also, um, you know, is it rate five, rate four? If it is rate five, then you know that uh, you are using one block for parity. So if you've got eight yes, discs, correct. that means you are using n minus one, like seven to store the data and eight one to keep the parity uh, block. So that means what? when you're storing data, you are only able to utilize seven out of eight discs. So your utilization is seven by eight multiplied by 100%. Mm -hmm. But if it is a red six, which is a little, you know, googly, then you're using two. I don't know. It may come in the end. Then it is uh, n minus two by n. A few, sir. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like when we say uh, incremental backup, right? So say for example, on mm -hmm. Sunday I did full backup, right? On Sunday you did full uh, backup, okay? Uh, uh, on Monday incremental. So incremental uh. means whatever whatever data has been whatever data have been added on Monday, right? Monday, yeah. And Since last was, full backup, yeah. Yes. Uh, on Tuesday, if I'm doing uh, that uh, differential backup, hmm. so differential backup means it will take the data of Monday also, right? Uh, Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday. That is differential backup. So this is the main difference, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And on Wednesday, if again I do uh, differential backup, so it will take data of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday all three days. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, all three days or only Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, same thing, na? Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But Monday I did uh, in uh, incremental. Tuesday I did differential. So on Wednesday, if I am doing differential again, so whether it will take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or it will take only Wednesday. No, no. Even see, even if you use uh, differential or incremental, the output of the um, particular like uh, on Wednesday you are storing uh, basically backuping the data from Monday to Wednesday itself, right? Because on no, no, Tuesday we already case, done the differential backup. No, in case of incremental, it will take the data only that day. Say for example, on Monday incremental, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Tuesday incremental. Hmm. Wednesday again, if I am doing incremental, so it will take data only Wednesday. It will Wednesday, not take right. data uh -huh. Tuesday, right? So, right. but in case of differential, if, if I have done Monday incremental, Tuesday differential, mm -hmm. and if again I am doing Wednesday differential, so which all data it will take? Uh, since last full backup, right? So, okay, since last full backup, right? Wednesday, Wednesday. That so is... It will take Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah. But usually yeah. we don't do that, right? Continuously to yeah, the no, but uh, Question point of view, I'm asking. Continuous to definition is not allowed. Clarity. Okay, so whatever are there, I will choose from discourse also, like which we are not able to get clarity over, you know. Yeah. Uh, call, so Just go through the uh, slide once and the revision session. That will be enough. Uh, the slides are too, you know, too heavy, heavy loaded. Yeah, so revision slides that we have provided. Now you can go through. Last but just revision session, this three revision session and week two revision session. So not week two, sorry, quiz two revision sessions. So those topics were discussed in detail. Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven, eight. And today also yesterday also we were discussed near about six hours. So that is week nine and ten. It was nine. Yeah. Yesterday was a record, sir. <laughs> Five and so, so week twelve, sir, can be Sir, week two can we expect question from that equivalence also, or there will be only from nested block and you know, twelve point one, twelve point two. Both. Yeah, both. Equivalence also, those nested loops and also. Both How many questions, sir? Uh, four all. No, from week twelve. <laughs> that we can tell. <laughs> there are two modules, so you can expect two questions, right? At least two. Yeah, at, at least two. And what about week 11, sir? Week 11, yeah. So week eight four. Yeah. Four so we already eight. said na, that week 1, 2 at 50% and then 9, 10, 11, 12, 50%. 50%. Yes. Yeah. Actually, sir, you can tell one or two questions. So from the next uh, revision session, more participation will happen. <laughs> <laughs> so can I ask a question? Uh, Read a question. Yes. Uh, week 10. Week 10, okay. 
graded question. Uh, uh, question four. Yeah, okay. Pradeep, are you there? Can you take that question? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, okay, let me share the screen. Get this. Do you have any specific doubt or not able to solve that question? Uh, see, my doubt is uh, in the in T two. Uh, after uh, for uh, data point A, <coughs> why aren't we unlocking in transaction two? Uh, uh, okay. We uh, lock X A, then write A. Why aren't we using that unlock key there? Let me see. Week nine, right? Week, uh, okay, just a week, week ten. Week ten. Question number four. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Pradeep, I'm taking that question. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, let me take a screen. So. Yeah, after this doubt, you can explain that in continuation question three also. I think three and four are, I think they both okay. are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, one minute, right? So I'm just checking a screenshot. Yes. Yeah, my screen is visible, right? Yeah. No? Yes, sir. So what we have asked, right? So we have to uh, check the that it is two P lockable or not, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's try to apply two P lockable, right? Okay. So this is T one, and for this this is T two, right? Okay. right so first is read a right so for reading okay. we have to Share apply it. the share lock Share right it. yeah so you have to, so you have to apply share lock lock share lock then we can read a right right, right. okay then for that read b right mm -hmm. so we can see that this is read a uh, we can we have to apply cell lock on the b that item right right yes yeah, so, so we have to unlock yes no we can without the help of unlock we can lock oh, on the data item b it's different data it's item. Yeah. different data item yeah yeah lock cell lock on b right so we can read b yeah. right then uh, write a right uh, so here i have a doubt yeah. Suppose uh, in transaction two, yeah. If it was A, then uh, then uh, do we have to unlock uh, transaction one first? Then, yeah, yeah. The, suppose like that, T one and T two. Mm -hmm. Suppose the like schedule is given as right one A, and the right two A. Mm -hmm. Right two A. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do? We have to apply exclusive lock on A. Then we have to write the data item. Then okay. we have to unlock Just the unlock. data item because the exclusive is not 
no shared right so that's right. why you have to unlock no. then we can apply exclusive lock on no that it. is for writing if it, if it was for reading okay so there can be like like let me remove so suppose schedule is given like that suppose r1 a and r2 and a r2 a right mm -hmm. so we can apply share lock share lock okay then read a mm -hmm. and share lock as no we can share right multiple okay. share lock is possible so, so without no need one lock there yeah no no okay. need. if there is a exclusive if there is a, like schedule is given r1 a and write to a okay. then we have to unlock right hello okay so because we can share share lock but the but you can see that if you have to you have to apply exclusive lock right hmm. so lock x share lock then yeah. read a unlock it unlock it then we can apply lock x okay. uh, you can exclusive lock. Yes. So, whenever we have this exclusive lock, a, we first we have to release unlock the lock a if it is shared, and uh, then only we can apply. Yeah, because we have also discussed the yes, you no know, uh, lock oh, matrix. Lock matrix multiple yeah. share lock is possible, but okay. one is share lock is applied, okay. exclusive lock is not. No, not uh, you cannot okay. apply exclusive lock. You have to unlock the data item okay. Okay. like that. Okay. So, sir, when the unlock position is remain open, can you please go back to your table? Yes. Uh, the leftmost table, what you are explaining for this, the for the schedule, whatever is given as R one A and R two A. Okay, we have to here, is, um, here we are a uh, lock R A. Okay. Then why are we really doing again another lock A? Okay, okay, let me remove, uh, no, remove that. Both are read. Okay, yeah, yeah. So let, let me, you know, let me complete. Okay, see, this is a, this is read a, so for reading the data item, we have to apply cell lock, right? Yes. So for it, we we have applied share lock. So lock then share lock, right? Yeah. Then we have uh, reading the data item A, right? Yeah. Then T two read B one two read B, right? No 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 no. You were taking a separate example, not different oh. schedule. And, and R A and R A. R A. Okay okay so. That's the one I was asking. Okay okay so yeah. So, can you tell the schedule? R1A. R1A. Then? Again R1A. R1A. Right. Okay. Yes. T1. So here we are unlocking it. Then T1 we are unlocking it. See. We can see lock. We can apply see lock. Yeah, yeah. Is it R1? Second is R1A or R2A? R1A. Second is R2A. R2A, R2A, yeah. Sorry. Then read yeah. a. Okay, we know that in if you see the lock matrix, we can apply multiple share lock, right? Without the yes, unlock. Yes, yes, yes. Then we can apply share lock. Ah uh, no, that is a question I asked. Should we need to put a lock shared A for transaction two? Because lock A is applied in transaction one, it remains locked. Should we need to really put a, another lock? Yeah, see, we, we have we have yesterday we discussed and so share lock multiple share lock is possible. We can share multiple share lock only share lock. Okay. Only share lock multiple share lock is possible. Other than that is not possible. So if there are T one and the T two data item, we can suppose. Uh, is, it an, is it an option or mandatory? Because based on the lock condition only, we are talking about growing and shrinking now. So this is two page lockable. That, that is the another thing. Oh, okay. See, this, lock compatibility it is given, right? This. Yeah, lock compatibility. 
So see. Sir, I think you you solved that question. Then many doubt get cleared, sir. What you are yeah. solving? Question. You just continue that. Uh, many things get cleared. Sir, that the T two, if it was uh, exclusive B, then T two is exclusive B. Suppose it was right B, then do we have to unlock A? No, no, because the see B is the different data item, right? Okay, then it's fine. Okay, fine. B is a different data item, right? Huh. Then so you just continue this thing, there's many things clear. Okay, okay. Then yeah. WA this right? Yeah. T112. Yeah. Right that. Then we can you know uh, upgrade the lock, right? Upgrade the lock. Upgrade into the exclusive lock, right? We can upgrade into the exclusive lock because we have already applied a shared lock, right? So then we can what we can do we can do we can do you know, write write the data item write the data item right then what we have to then share lock right hello yeah yes so there we have to unlock yeah then you have to unlock the data item okay. after that is clear yeah yes sir then we, we have to uh, you know apply the share so, lock you have to apply the so shared lock, lock, shared lock, A. Then we can apply the no, we can read a it's because see, read a and write a right. So you can you have to apply the exclusive lock, right? Right. So then you have to apply exclusive lock. You can read a and the right a up to that is clear. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so for read and write, you are both using exclusive one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have to write B. So already applied, you know, share lock. We have to upgrade the lock, right? <clears throat> Sir, should we not really go with the shared lock for read A and uh, exclusive lock for uh, write A? Exclusive lock on which? No, no. In the in the transaction, what you are writing here, you combined read A and write A. Yeah. Under a shared lock, no, oh, exclusive lock. Yeah, this is so what I am asking. Can we need not split that one into shared lock for read a? Yeah, you can also do that. So, I mean, see, you can see that the read a and the write a. So, that's why I, I've applied the exclusive lock. So, you can also do like that also. Okay. So, but yeah, will that affect uh, your uh, growing and shrinking? No, no, uh, no, 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 no. 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 See, we can apply shell lock. Mm -hmm. Then read a. Then we have apply. You can apply. You no, know, upgrade the lock. Unlock. No, without the unlock. Oh, without unlock. Okay. Then write a. After write. Then write b. Right. Write no. b. Write b. So we have we have to upgrade the lock. Yeah, uh, we have to upgrade the lock. So lock x b. Then. Right B. Then right. Right B. Then unlock. Yeah, then you can see that the transaction T1. So one to the uh, read the B data item. So you have to unlock, right? So unlock the A and unlock the B also, right? Okay, okay. So unlock the A, unlock the B, right? Okay. Then read B and the right B, right? So read B and write B. So you can also <coughs> apply you know only once exclusive lock or you can also apply first share lock and again apply exclusive lock so that i mean upgrade the lock that also possible so for so i am applying exclusive lock on b read b and then the right b and we have unlock right sorry what <laughs> okay so then then I unlock the b data item after that is clear yes sir yes now we have to see that this is a 2p lockable or not no no. Because you can see no. that uh, this is the growing phase. This is the growing phase. 
and this is the this is the shrinking phase right mm -hmm. yes and then again, again growing phase, phase. again growing yeah. phase so so this is a not a two pillar payment up to that yeah. is clear yes. yeah. If any of the transaction is not uh, 2P, then we can say the whole schedule is not 2P lockable. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Whole schedule is not 2P lockable. And subunit is not serializable also, right? Uh, no, no. It, it, you cannot say. You have to check. Yeah, we have to check. There is a question, na? The schedule is not serializable. Yeah. So this option is right. Yes. We cannot say that this is a serializable or not. So you have to also check. This is a view. Conflict serializable or not, or view serializable or not. Right. So first we have to check conflict serializable. If it is conflict sir, serializable, sir, we can sir. I will take sir, I will take only you know only 20 30 seconds. Yesterday yeah. we discussed that if something is not a you know, if something is a two-phase lockable, right? Yeah. Then it will definitely be conflict serializable, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely it will be. Okay, but if it is not uh, two-phase lockable, then also we have to check, right? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. may be okay. It may okay. be conflict serial level, it may not be conflict serial level. Okay, got it. Please please proceed. Yes, sir. Sorry. Okay. Up to that is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So now you have to check for serial okay. level. For you have to check conflict serial level. First you have to you can set for EGO is conflict serial level. If it is conflict serial level, we can say that this is serial is serial level. After that, if it is not conflict serial level, you have to check view serial level. If it is view serial level. We can say that this is a serial eligible. If it is not view serial eligible, we can say that this serial is not serial eligible. But sir, if it is not conflict, then it is not view, right? No, it no, no. may be. It may, it be. may be. See, no. like that. If this is the set. This. No, no. This is if the it serial, is right? not view, then it can't be conflict. Yes. This is the conflict no, serial. If not conflict, then it is not view. No, no. This is the conflict serial eligible. And this is the view serial level. Yes. So if it is not complete, it may be view serial level. But uh, I think yesterday you said the opposite. No, no, no. You said no, the no. same thing yesterday also. It was too oh, late. Same yesterday, sir, said the mm -hmm. same thing. He said the same thing yesterday. What he is saying is all conflicts realizable are view serial level, but not vice versa. Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yes, yeah, so you have to check the view serial level. Yeah. No, can you repeat? Please? See, uh, if there is a serial, serial, serial right? Mm -hmm. So this is the conflict serial level. See, yes, I am writing the C. S. Then there is a view serial level. So yes. if suppose. You have to check that this is a serial schedule or not. So first you have to check. You can check conflict serial. If it is conflict serial eligible, because if you have to check if this is this is conflict serial eligible or not. Mm -hmm. So if it is conflict serial eligible, we can say that this is a serial schedule. So if it is not conflict serial eligible, then you have to check view serial eligible. If it is view serial eligible, then we can say that this is a serial schedule, right? So on uh, all conflict serial eligible are view serial eligible, but vice versa is not true. So, uh, sir, a schedule which is neither view serializable nor conflict serializable can also be serializable, right? Yeah, can also be serializable. The, how do you check that? So, so B, you have to check the view serializable. Okay. So, so, so for serial schedule, we have we have two methods. First is conflict, and second is view. After Hello. Uh, that is not discovered if any other way to find the serializable schedule. So that is not discovered, right? You can omit that part, right? If, how to find that. So uh, if, we, if, we, if we see that it is not conflict serializable, nor view serializable, it yeah, that's that's that we can conclude that it is uh, not yeah, you can conclude that. right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Any doubt? No. Uh, sir, one numerical I'm having, sir, from, from bitmap index. I'm posting in chat box. So you can post it in the discourse also. I will answer. Okay. 
and for week 12 uh, please see nested loop join formula and the block nested loop join formula yes sir there may be one numerical come that we have covered very well in life sessions ah uh, yeah so uh, then there may be one numerical come so that's why i'm telling yeah so Bindu, we can take that uh, bitmap hashing right so what is bitmap hashing is a clear yesterday we had discussed right hello okay, yes, okay. Today also we solved a problem. Uh, problem. Yeah, the problem other one the bitmap index problem. That IITK and uh, all that. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, Let's what see. you say? Nested loop and block. Blocks, no loop. Nested loop. Block, nested loop, and the nest. Uh, sorry, nested loop zone and the block nested loop zone. Sorry, I'm, so let, let me see the. Okay. Slide. Okay, one minute. A nested loop join and the block nested loop join. These are the important topics. Sir, 9, 10, 11, 12 has the higher weightage comparing 1 to 8. Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, from 9 to 12, there may be you know 40 to 60 percent. Yes. Yes. And so then, if, if you have some time, sir, just solve one problem, sir. This nested and block nested. If or if it's not taking much time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will do. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. One minute, please. Yep. This subject is such a difficult subject. If you read it by yourself alone, you get nothing. So this is my my impression. How, how do you other guys are feeling it? So you want to do cross join, huh? not self join. <laughs> yes. Too much content is there. Subject is not that. No, in fact, you you do not know whether you, you understood. Very vast. Subject yeah. is not that that the content is too much. Yes, for for you know for week eight to twelve, nine to twelve, we are getting only you know eight to ten days because till fourth of December we will be struggling with OP and all or twenty seven. At least one to two weeks more time we should be uh, on this. Uh, yes, so it's going to be better. Uh, and there are other just uh, join numerical uh, right? And this time OPP and this internal come so close dates. Mm. Affected. It's a time. It's a time constraint, you know. Time is, this is not tough. This is not tough as PDSA and all, but you know the content is too much. Everything is getting covered in the you know, live session. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, very good, sir. <laughs> So, so please wait a minute. So I'm finding on slide. There are three more, two, three, yes, maybe can. So actually I'm finding. Yes, yes, slide. sir. Yeah, please. No wait. Issue, sir. Please take your time, sir. We, are like, we have time till Sunday, sir. Don't worry. <laughs> Like this time is time numerical, it is so confusing, you know, greater than, less than, read time is time, write time is time. I think what will happen is if the T1, T2, you know, gets interchanged, I think like yesterday, T2 has a time stamp of 3 and T1 has a time stamp of 5, then another googly. Okay. 
so i will recommend you to please go through that one page of means the recommended book means court book just go through that which one which one sir court sixth edition court. one page of court Recom which? the recommended book is court right so yes 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 which part. page sir page time number time stamp protocol page number sir so, so i exactly not, not remember the page number please go through that so one page only one page is there right the condition is there so you have to check that so okay so it. hello yeah my am, am i audible right yes sir very much yeah so i will solve two numerical problems so yeah yes sir thank you thank you consider that this is the 12 only Consider the information. This is a previous year in term question. So consider the information given on relation project and relation allotment in table one and answer the question 11, right? So project and relation allotments are given numbers of report, records and the numbers of block, right? Then the consider worst case memory availability, assuming allotment as outer relation, identify the correct cost allotment for the next allusion of allotment and project. So you have to find the numbers of block transfers and the numbers of security right so this is the national loop zone right hello yes sir yes yes sir so numbers of block transfer in national loop zone post case memorability equal to nr into bs plus br this is a worst case memory ability so you have in the question like will be given in the worst case memory ability what is nr 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 is the numbers of record in the outer relation so numbers of record you can see the allotment as outer relation so numbers of record in outer relation is 9000 right hello Okay. So 9000, right? What is BS? BS is inner. Number Num of blocks in inner. Numbers of blocks in inner relation. Mm. So what will be the numbers of block in the inner relation? 200. Yes. 200, sir. So numbers of which one is the inner relation? Project. So project is numbers of in 200 plus what is BR? Block of the outer relation 600. Yeah, so uh, allotment is the outer relation and the numbers of block in the outer relation. So 600. So if you do calculate, what will be the? 180 This is block transfer. Up to that is clear. So NR is the number of records in uh, outer sorry, relation. In outer. Yeah, outer relation. Here outer is project. Yeah, outer is project. Yeah. No allotment. Yes. Hmm. Up to that is clear. Yes, sir. Sir, why six hundred is not added? Yeah, it is six hundred is added, right? So one eight zero zero. It this is a six, right? This is uh, a six. Sorry, okay. this is a six. So this will be the block transfer. Up to that is clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And numbers of seek required, anyone? Blocks in project plus blocks in allotment. Numbers of seek required. Mm, seek required. Okay, okay. One minute. Yeah. NR plus br and nr plus br sir. what is nr nr is 9000 now what do you mean by nr uh, number of tuples in uh, you know outer outer yeah. so nr is numbers of records in the outer relation so numbers of records in the outer relation is 9000 9000 and what is br number of blocks in allotment outer relation Numbers of blocks in outer relation. So numbers of blocks in outer relation is six hundred, right? Right. 
ट for block nested loop join of allotment and project so numbers of block transfer in block nested loop join what is the formula nr into bs plus br no this is the block nested loop join earlier one was <coughs> nested loop join this is a block nested loop join this will be equal to br into bs plus br this is a worst case memory availability what is the br blocks in outer relation blocks in outer relation so blocks in outer relation is 600 600, 600 times yeah 600 times 200 200 blocks in inner relation plus 600 so this will be around One two zero six zero zero block transfer. One two zero zero six zero block transfer. And numbers of the <coughs> required. Equal to two into B R. What is B R? Number of block in outer relation. Two into six hundred. So two L zero zero six required. So how this formula come? I've already you know explained in very detail. Way. So you can also watch. We can. Well, look, join formula. This N R in B R. Questions. Yes. Uh, yeah. Please don't talk only one person because, yeah. So number of seek is two uh, into B R, right? Yeah, two into B R. Uh, B R yeah. is number of blocks in blocks in the outer. Outer one, relation. Outer. Yeah, outer one. Uh, Outer range is six hundred, so two into six hundred, twelve twelve hundred, one two zero zero six. So will you please share this also? Uh, the, I will share the problems. Yeah, please. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah. You, you will just share the problems. Yeah, I will share the all the problems. Problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any doubt? Mm. Uh, so I think this question set is true. Yeah. Hello. So actually, I mean, it's, it's my uh, network problem or your network problem. Your voice is. No, 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 it is uh, everybody's problem. I think his network is not good. Okay. Nanga okay. Prasad, your your voice is breaking. Ah, uh, sir, I was asking that uh, this is the last uh, live session, week twelve. Yeah, can you can you repeat once till one? And I'm asking that this was discussed in live uh, last live session, week live session for twelve. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, block and nested. Yeah, yeah. It is dis described in very detail way. Week twelve okay. practice session, I think. Practice session. Yeah, okay. week twelve practice session. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any doubt? Hello. Are we having any more class, sir? Uh, no, no. Sir, can, I, if you are now, yeah, you you are, you are now audible. Yeah, I, I was I was telling that sir, in the same question set, there is a numerical on bitmap index there. Yeah, bitmap index, yes. 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 There is a numerical on Pradip? bitmap index there. Ah, uh, Pradeep, can you take bitmap index? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, his problem. Yeah, I'll take. Okay, no problem. In the same question, sir. Hello. In the yes, same question. Yes, go on. 
but I have posted also, sir. In chat box, I have posted, sir. Okay, okay. In chat box, I have posted, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so consider the relation election. Pradeep, are you there? Yeah. Pradeep presenting. Hello. Uh, is it yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, it is visible. Okay. So yesterday we discussed about the bitmap indexing. Suppose there is one table. Suppose the table name is right food. Okay. So food has FID, food type, and the rating. Right. So rating is possible. Uh, suppose one to five value is possible in rating. You have to rate it. And there is two types of food. Uh, first one is a dessert and the second one is soup. Right. So if first one is an F1, F2 food, food ID, F3, F4, F5, F6, right? And this is a soup. desert. D means desert or S means soup. D. D. And rating is like one, two, four, <coughs> five, two, three. Right. So this is the rating. Okay. So how? why we create the beat and beat map indexing so first we will see the column value whichever the columns we are using in that value are repetitive or not if that value is a repetitive then we have to use the beat map indexing otherwise it is meaningless to use it bit map indexing okay. what is the advantage okay. of the beat map indexing so we cannot find that advantage right okay okay similar for the ratings also so ratings here mm -hmm. you can see one to five only value is possible so that is a kind of distinct value right mm -hmm. now how do we how we create the bitmap index right so mm -hmm. for that if we are using bitmap index for this particular column that is a food type right mm -hmm. <clears throat> right so we see what is the unique value so mm -hmm. the unique value is d and s right and you have yes. to number the columns also that will start from zero to three four you have to fix it whatever the order you want to do that is a fixed first fixed mm -hmm. it then you have to create the bitmap index using right. this particular columns so that is a full right. type so d right. so d you have to check whether this particular for the simplicity purpose, I will write like this. This will help you to write the bitmap. Right. So here you can see for the D, you have to check whether this particular columns where is D value is present, then you have to put one, otherwise zero. Hmm. Okay. So you can tell me where I have to put the one and where I have to put zero. Yeah. So one, zero, one. One zero one 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 and zero zero, one. zero one. Yes, yes. And tell me for the S. Uh, zero one zero one. Uh, zero, zero. Uh, zero zero one zero. One zero. It will be one opposite zero. of the previous one because it's a binary. Similarly, uh, if uh, yes. Okay, so we create using this particular food type, right? Yes, so yes. if I ask you, finds the name of the food I. Uh, find the food ID. So that is the type food type is desert. So you can mm -hmm. simply find out the particular columns wherever the set value is one. Mm -hmm. Value is set. So you can identify by looking at this. So that is mm -hmm. the main advantage of bitmap indexing, right? Yes. If that is present, also there is another column is present, the bitmap index. 
so suppose that is ratings right so you can tell me what is the unique value here for the rating here so it one, is two, three, one, one two three one two three four five so one one two three four five three four five Tell me what is the bitmap value of that? Yeah, one zero zero zero. Everything is zero. One, one. first one is one, sir. First one, yeah. Then one. all four zero. All then zero one six. six I think six call. Yeah, six zero. Then yeah, then zero one. Then all four zeros. Yes. And then no, no, I, sorry. Uh, the fifth fifth one is also one. Fifth one is also one. Yes, yes. Then zero zero three, one. All the first value is zero. zero. Yes. Then yeah. one. Yes. And fourth value is uh, zero zero one. Then all zeros. And fifth is zero zero uh, zero zero zero, zero, one, zero, zero. One, sir, one. And yeah. then zero zero. Okay. Now, if the question is like this, you have to find the food food ID. That is, food type is dessert and ratings is one. Right. So how to do that? So you have to do for the query is you have to find the food type is desert and mm. ratings is one right mm. so then one what, what you have to do pick this particular bitmap index value and desert right. index value and performs the and, 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 and operation. Operation. right so what is the value of that one zero one one zero one and this value is one zero zero so tell me but what suppose is the, the, the food id is zero sir the food id is zero so food id is zero so the food id one 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 yeah yes. yeah food id this one is a satisfying only this condition yes. so you have to fetch suppose, this couple sir suppose there could have been one more one rating there could have been one more one rating like yeah, uh, yeah. that will satisfy suppose this value is also one yes, right yes, so there is yes. change in the bitmap value also right yes yeah so yes. that is one so then you can see this is a satisfying so these two are satisfying the column value okay so what is one main question around this so if i ask you you creating an index file using this ratings ratings mm -hmm. attribute then what is the file size of this particular index file mm -hmm. so what is the size of it will be always the number of unique labels as rows and columns will be the number of tuples. Suppose that is the unique level is m, so and the numbers of tuple is n, so m cross n bits. Right. No number of tuples is m or what? Number of tuples is m. Numbers of tuple is n, and m is the unique value. No, no. So that is by special. N is number of column, I think. No is number of column, I think. Yes. No, no. No need to remember that. You understand the fact, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what it's you have to right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so that yes. is important. Okay. So the question that you posted in the chat, what will be the answer? Sir? Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah, so this is the question, yes. So it is seven values, right? So where the question is? So in the chat, sir. In the chat box, sir. Okay, let me post again if it is not visible. No, it's there. It's there. Okay, okay. No, no, sir. Sir, I joined again. Yes, oh, I have okay. posted again. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's sir, I joined again. Yes, sir. So oh, the question is this uh, some end question sir yeah this question right yes 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 yeah mm -hmm. so similarity uh, similarly you have to take this is the column name election right this is the uh, this is the relation name election uh, and this is the column name right yes this is also column name, also columns name and footer candidate vote for so this is the the candidate who's uh, represent themselves in the uh, means voting so you can say these are the leader you can say right you have to vote for this leader or you can say also party is there right 
so this is the numbers of tuples the numbers of tuples in the election is 1024 so n value is suppose numbers of tuples is n value equal to 1024 and the attribute right the attribute candidate vote for is seven different value right so m value is your seven right right so you have to construct a bitmap indexing using relation uh, relation election for the attribute candidate vote for so what is the size of bitmap index so you can tell me what is the size of seven 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 in here in 24 yeah to four bits right yeah but i think in the question that is not given in the bit you have to convert it into bytes so you can simply divide it by 8 so that will convert it into right so five uh, but sir then what is the significance of these four different eight. values sir then what is the significant of four different values which is given no, that a tree has four different values that is below 25 that's a destruction this is destruction right so this is the pada sir er, hello yes yeah, sir so indexing was done on age then we would take a uh, 1024 into into 4 right yeah yeah ulta, yeah. ulta 4 4 by 1024 yeah so that is these two value are given in this particular example so to understand whether you understand bitmap index or not right but here in the next question it is a clearly given the bitmap index for the relation election on the attribute of candidate vote for right mm. it is clearly mm. given right so that is mm. kind of uh, you can say whether you understand bitmap index or not okay so that's the reason why we have multiplying 7 into 1024 right yeah, yeah. so why we multiply using 7 so you understood right mm -hmm. because the, the attribute is bitmap index is a create Based upon this attribute, right? Hmm. You can ignore hmm. that part. Okay, so, so that the, that four range, whatever has been given, that we have to ignore, right? Yeah, that is kind of you can think right now. That is the extraneous information given to you, correct, to make correct, you confused. Correct. And this, we are dividing it by eight just to con for conversion factor, right? Yeah, yeah. So in the, I think in the question, that question answer is not in bits, right? So you are in bytes. It is in bytes. It is. It is in bytes, sir. Yeah. So you have to convert that thing into bytes. So you know yeah, the conversion eight, eight bits yeah, equal yeah. one eight, one bytes. byte. One byte. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can we expect a question on this, sir? <laughs> Now, since the concept is clear. <laughs> so i can say this will if question will come it will help you to solve okay that's a simple thing m man divided by 8 is a math so this is pretty simple right mm there once it gets clear then everything is simple <laughs> so i have uploaded the uh, week 12 numerical right so in the google slide and also paste it in the chat box you can also see okay sir so you can solve this type of method thank right. you very much sir this is very helpful yeah 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 the doubt or other we can bind up the session uh, sir just a second so gp has more arrows Then you can leave the bus mate on delete casket, sir. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> go ahead, sir. No, 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 you can leave. No, I I can understand. We are wasting your time, so you can leave. Uh, on on, sir. Yeah, yeah. On delete on delete casket. What is that, sir? On delete casket. On delete casket means okay. So let me. Con sir, you have given a set of problems only, no, not the solutions in this link. I I yeah. So you, uh, you have to use that formula, no? Whatever formula has so been written. So if you formula. if you are If you see, if you have to solve right without yes. solving, how can you, you no know, do in the exam? Where do I have for an answer to check it? I can throw some number, but how do I know? So actually, I, I have solved all the question in the week twelve practice session. Ah, okay. You can check. Yeah. Right. 
okay thank you so okay suppose these are the table right so mm -hmm. suppose this is a department table and this is the department table consists of suppose department name and the building right mm -hmm. okay right and this is the instructor table so suppose this is a id then name and then department name right so uh, this is a foreign key referring to the this department in the building table right up to that is clear yes sir okay so suppose id is one two three four and name is like a b c d and the department like cs cs me and suppose bt right and cs me and the bt right, right. so and and this is a building right right like building building one building two and the building three right mm. so if you want to delete if you want, if you want to delete csb1 it will allow or not by integrity constant if you want to delete this row mm -hmm. it will allow or not by integrity constant it should allow also it will not don't allow right okay yes yeah but if like on delete cascade is applied if on delete cascade is applied if you delete if you delete this csb1 mm. this row and this row will also be deleted from the child table this is called on, on delete cascade okay so, so sir, if you your do, department, you delete, department sir your department name is a foreign key to the department table right yeah yeah right. and so this is the parent table this and is that the is the table. and that is the and that is the primary key and department name is the primary key yeah. in department table right yeah yeah department name is the primary key. so so we and cannot delete the, the primary key so that is the constraint right no no see this is a foreign key so if you delete so we are taking from that value so instructor department name we are taking from department name whatever right. the right right so we cannot delete if if it does not anything is mentioned we cannot delete this if on delete cascade is mentioned uh, if on delete cascade is mentioned if you delete this data item Right. automatically deleted this tuple also and this tuple also so this okay. is called on delete cascade okay so so that suppose thing. if i suppose if i have to delete me also right yeah and if i perform uh, on delete me so then the third third row will also be deleted right yeah. from if, the if it is mentioned row. if it is mentioned on delete cascade like that it will be like it will be mentioned like that so, so but why it is not allowed to delete without on delete cascade because it's the primary key in department table no no see in department name we are taking from that department right so whatever that in department value we are taking from parent table this is actually parent table and this is a tile table so we are taking from that so whatever we are right we are taking from that right no your yeah, parent table is department not the instructor right yeah parent table is department so uh -huh. we are taking that value right Mm. We are linking. Mm. So it is a foreign key. Department name yeah. instructor is the, is the foreign key. Is the foreign key, right? Yes. Okay. So okay. So suppose okay. Let me uh, suppose one question is suppose 
if on delete cascade is does not mention suppose if you want to delete this tuple what you have to do you got to delete the row 3 if, 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 so what you have to do if first you would delete no suppose on delete cascade does not mention what you have to do right so first we have to delete this table this okay. tuple then we can delete okay. this tuple okay. right okay 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 sir so i think the on delete cascade is so please see the on delete cascade also uh, professor what says actually it so so this is also important yeah see all need casket concept is important so it may come can we expect a numerical sir because in one of the question paper one numerical is there uh, see i can say which question come which question don't come okay okay got it no no just numerical whether numerical will be there or not that's what so like say uh, uh, what, means concept of on delete cascade is important right okay okay that, that's why i can say okay so what is sir uh, sir can you uh, i was doing mvd actually uh, yeah. so that mvd when we have multiple rows right i mean almost 5 6 rows are there yes that example can you explain sir i was not able to catch after that thing actually yeah. uh, on mvd right okay. yeah yeah because when we have four records then it's fine yeah, but yeah. when we have multiple records now with different names so there was actually i think uh, we have discussed in the uh, week one to eight revision session so you can also go through that because this is a little no. okay sir. so you can also watch that session also that will be helpful if i and if you did not understand you can post also on the discourse also we'll answer don't worry okay sir yeah okay, sir. I'll, do, I'll do so thank you yeah Okay, I think we can bind up the session, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, thank sir. you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone.